right, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. This is Running on Empty Food Review. <laughs> and, okay, so you're, uh, you're already we're starting, starting to run out of these. Nice. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, that's a popular one. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. I've never heard of that one. I've Who's never heard that of the week? In my life. You've never seen no. Report of the Week? Never. No. He's the guy no. that reviews fast food while where he, while he's wearing like the guy who looks like a salamander. Yeah, kind of. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know who that is then. Yeah. I would say he yeah. looks kind name? of like a salamander. I don't know what his <laughs> name is. The the channel is called Report of the Week and he's the only <laughs> fast food reviewer that's doing a decent job at it. Like his only oh, this real guy. competition right. is uh Yeah, and yeah, he says yeah, the yeah, same yeah, thing okay. at the beginning. He kind of looks like Tr Tyrell from Mr. Robot. Yeah. A I little guess. bit. I don't remember who Tyrell is, but <laughs> that's okay. Anyway, now. we're Sardonicast, and um, this is a podcast of people who are us. And <laughs> I'm Adam from Your Movie Sucks. I'm Alex from I Hate Everything. I'm Ralph from Ralph the Movie Maker. YouTube.com slash. God damn it, Ralph! Every time. <laughs> yeah, it's like well it's, in the description. It's bitch. like they wouldn't be able to find you unless you did that. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> Alex. You sound kind of different. You sound yeah. I, I, I don't sick. know what. I, I'm 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 worried now because you're oh. making me like all self conscious about how I sound. <laughs> I'm sorry. I honestly didn't notice a difference. I'm diagnosing it's, you right now, Alex. I'm sorry. You're gonna die. In um, fact, we're all gonna die. Eventually, well, one day. at least but you're, gonna, you're gonna, die gonna die sooner. Doing, what episode is this? Three. This is four. Four. <laughs> oh Holy my shit. god. He's Dude, dying. You're fucked. He's lost Dude, his mind. No, this is this is your guys' fault, okay? Because being in the fucking other <laughs> side of the planet with your stupid daylight saving uh -huh. bullshit, I'm all thrown mm -hmm. off now. So yeah, we have a uh, set time and date for when we record, obviously. And uh, today, about uh, 20 minutes ago, as we're setting up, it's just uh, Ralph and I in the call, and we're like, um, what? <laughs> and uh, yeah. we asked Alex? Uh, Alex where he is. He's like, don't we record in an hour what from knowing? now? <laughs> yeah. And we were like, what the fuck? And yeah. I just remembered daylight savings time. Daylight savings yeah. happened about a week ago. I don't even know if Alex, does your country participate in daylight savings? Yeah, we do. Which was going to make me ask, how, how does this work? Why I don't know. I just I thought did... the whole world did it at the same time. I thought so. No, too. I thought. It doesn't. Oh, it's not, apparently it's not. not here for a while. I'm learning when something new. When is yours? New. Like a few weeks or a month or? It's um, Sunday the twenty fifth of March. So it's, it's not for another five oh, it's days. Oh, not really. Why? That's a big <laughs> gap. That's that's what I'm asking. <laughs> that's you like guys. a two week. That's why I didn't even consider it. So we'll oh be in God. sync next episode. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. good. At we'll least. be back in sync. I think. But you what know we're gonna fuck? have we're gonna have the same problem when the next daylight savings time. Yeah. We're just gonna totally forget. We gotta it. figure that shit out. Uh oh, well <laughs> it'll it'll be Alex who goes on the call and like where are you guys? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I um, it's kind of it's kind of an outdated thing to do, you know. Like daylight savings was all about farmers, you know, being able to have the maximum amount of light or something <laughs> for their crops. Yeah, I guess I think that's well, but how we it still works. need farmers. I, I there must be some other reason for it. I doesn't just... it, does it not signify the days becoming longer? Well, in I... terms of light, it's all to do. With I don't the know. Light I the feel sunset. like, but who who gives a shit about this? <laughs> like, I well, it it pisses me off because it's just one of those things that we do because we've been doing it for so long, and I kind of hate that mentality of like, <laughs> oh, tradition over logic. Mm -hmm. Like if it's not relevant anymore, then maybe we shouldn't be doing it. You know, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be sacrificing animals to the sky gods at the same time. Or <laughs> we could just just slit the throat of a sheep and throw it in the ditch and hope that our tornadoes don't happen as frequently. I, I just straight up don't understand it. Like what logic is there behind it being weeks later here compared to where you guys are? Yeah, that that too. Let, let us know in the Reddit, everybody. Yeah, there I'm sure someone's be. some yeah. goddamn expert's going to go in the comments and explain it in immense mm, detail. But I don't think so. I think the answer is it's just nonsense, and it doesn't. <laughs> there's no <laughs> point because there's countries that have suggested to get rid of it, and I I think there's actually really? countries that have gotten rid of it. There might mm -hmm. be like specific states or provinces in countries that have gotten rid of it on their own. So wow. I I know that that's at least been a discussion for many regions 
in the past five years. I don't know if anything's actually happened from it, but it is a discussion where people are saying, hey, daylight savings doesn't need to exist anymore. Can we stop with the bullshit? Yeah. You know? Let's start a poll. Let's let's get people to vote. I've honestly never thought about this before. It. Like I've always been, exactly. as you said, <laughs> yeah, it's just something you, you just do. Works. You just do it because yeah. everyone says it's a thing and you should do it. Because <laughs> we've I always been summer. doing it. Don't think yeah. about it. Yeah, exactly. Don't use critical thinking. Yeah. Man, Don't it must think be about plebarian. anything. Anyway, yes. I'm currently tethering on my phone <laughs> doing this <laughs> because my internet's shit. I sent you guys well, not, my... Not uh, permanently, just for this week. It's shit. Yeah, well, hopefully. I up. called my ISP, and and um, they're coming over tomorrow. But when I was mm -hmm. on the phone with them, which was on Sunday, because it was ruining my Sunday stream, we determined that it was probably the modem. And I was like, hey, can you can you make sure that the guy who comes to check out my internet brings an extra modem? And he's like, well, I mean, he'll come check it out and... First, he'll need to determine if the modem is is the issue. I'm like, well, can you bring a modem? And if you don't need it, you don't have to give it to me. But if I do need it, then it's there. He's like, oh, I'll put a note on your account. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> I don't really trust that this is going to happen. I, I, I have a feeling like oh, dude, they're going to show up though. tomorrow. They're going to be like, yep, it's the modem. And then I'm going to have to reschedule for the like four days from then. And if it ruins my next Sunday stream, I'm going to be pissed. So none of us are having a good week. It's been very inconvenient. For, for everyone in in regard to everything. I predict that every time we start the podcast, it'll just be us talking about things fucking up. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, how we screwed up in some way or how uh -huh. things it's are It's good bad. conversation. <laughs> My aggravation doesn't come from anything I did. It's mm. come from our fan base recently. Good cause... segue. Yes. Nice. Thank you. Because I... I I usually, before the podcast starts, I look at the Reddit for the questions. So I, you know, I have some questions to ask everybody for the podcast. And this week in particular, I, I think our fans are retarded because <laughs> the, literally the dumbest fucking questions have littered the Reddit thread. Really? So I'm just, I sent a few to uh, Alex and I would like you to read some. Because okay. these fucking questions are so ridiculous. I'm kind of, I'm really upset and aggravated at our fan base for not <laughs> doing better than this. Um, wow. I haven't looked and, at them, I mean, so this is going to be my yeah. genuine first reaction. Yeah, this and is I like guess worse. Of course, this is worse than comment comeback because it's not even like joking, like, oh, are you guys gay or something? It's not like that. Mm. These are like serious, well written questions. Seriously. Well, two of us are. Well, yeah. Well, no, no one of us is. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about Alex, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely not me. But okay. like these questions like are fucking. You. Yes, for a second yeah. you did. There's a there's oh that too because on the Reddit there's a clip of me saying I'm a furry, but I'm quoting that fucking movie that you you showed in your childhood trauma thing. Uh, Ralph Ralph and I were doing the Twitch stream at the Oscars, and we were I I said that somebody looked like the owl from Rockadoodle, and I just said Jeepers, and Ralph finished the sentence saying I'm a furry, and I was like, well, there you go, we have a clip. Yeah, and they just took that part. <laughs> yeah, and then somebody posted it on Ralph's subreddit. <laughs> I think that was Fanboy that did that. Yes. <laughs> so on. yeah, you got you guys are really upsetting me this week. But yeah, these are really I... well written. Like Shh. proper English, proper grammatical spelling, everything, but they're just fucking dumb questions. Should I name and shame these people or just mm. leave it? Um, let, let's eh. just read the questions because I don't want to. Okay. We also have real questions at the end of the podcast. Yeah, oh, yeah. of course. So we can't, let's not pretend like they're all upsetting. Oh, yeah. There are like two or three good people in our Reddit thread, which I'm proud of. <laughs> but the rest of you, I'm really just disappointed in. Word of advice, Ralph, the absolute best way to get people on the internet to stop doing something is if you always say how much it bothers you and then everyone yeah. will stop doing it. I was going to mention that too. This is something we're never going to do again. So don't try to write really dumb questions because okay. <laughs> we're, not, <laughs> we're not doing this again. I just wanted to point it out because I'm yeah, annoyed. I will delete them all by hand if I see them next time uh -huh. I go on it if, and if exactly. they're stupid. Okay, let's start with this one. <clears throat> With Tomb Raider, Wonder Woman, and Black Panther, Hollywood seems to be hiring more muscular women to make movies more realistic. Does it bother you? I think it's distracting seeing women who look like men. <laughs> That's... What the fuck? 
Well, what do you want us to say to that? <laughs> yes, exactly. First of I all, that's not never true. considered this. That that is a tangled web. <laughs> that, is, that, that is something that you cannot answer because be, before you answer, you have to try and dissect what is even happening in this question. Like, there's, nothing there's he so says much is that correct. needs to be explained here. First of all, none of the women in Wonder Woman or Black Panther look like men or Tomb Raider. Yeah. yeah. From what I know, I like understand. Alicia Vikander does not look like a man. Gal Gadot does not look like a man. They have like masculine features like muscles. But they're not. Because they're superheroes. I was never like, oh my god, it looks like a man. I can't watch this. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think I'm uh, having a breakthrough. I think, I, I think I'm beginning to understand what this person is trying to say. I okay. think what they mean is that they don't have as ridiculously big of tits as Hollywood used to have yeah. uh, oh. female characters and does in that bully films you? show. Because that, I mean, why else would they mention Tomb Raider? Because Tomb Raider was a thing when Angelina Jolie was yeah. Tomb Raider. So yeah. if they're saying recently, then I think they might be just talking about how they don't have as big tits. Because it's not like yeah. it's not like she's more muscular than Angelina Jolie. They're both, of like, course I don't not. know. If anything, she's less muscular, I she think. She looks fit. She doesn't look like yeah. manly bodybuilder muscular. She looks fit. She looks yeah. healthy. I, I Like, I just don't understand the thought process <laughs> at yeah, all i think they're complaining that the tits aren't big enough is that's my yeah. best guess i don't know <laughs> so there we go we, we ended up ask, answering your stupid fucking question and someone else asked what, what is some of your favorite bands and musicians to which someone replied didn't they answer this in the last episode <laughs> and someone else said yes like come on uh, that was like a big chunk <laughs> We Sometimes literally you just gotta go for it. And uh, hope this it one works. is terrible. How would you rate your edginess in movie taste on a scale from zero to ten? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I didn't realize edginess could be rated out of ten, like in a yes. serious way. This one seems like a sarcastic joke comment, though. <laughs> but no, I don't fair. think so. I guess it's really hard to, be to fair, tell. I, I can't tell. Well, what is he referencing? Unless he's referencing my my Covenant video. There's a lot of um. There's a lot of people that look at the content that we make and how we're like sort of contrarian in our opinions, you know, and we all kind of unanimously agreed on on Black Panther um, just being mm -hmm. average. Um, there's yeah. a lot of people that look at things like that and they don't really fully understand the perspective of someone who could genuinely have those opinions. So they write them off as, ooh, they're trying to be edgy or they're trying to be different oh, or they're yeah, trying to. I, and I think that's kind of what they're referencing is that they probably hold beliefs that were like, ooh, let edge lords kind of people like, ooh, yeah. I'm only I only have this opinion to cause controversy, and it's not an opinion that I genuinely have. There's a lot of people that think that way, and I think I think that uh, they're kind of pandering to the others in the crowd that that uh, feel that way. But we're not even say we're not even praising any edgy movies. No, like, no, it's not like we're not... going like, oh yeah, Mein Kampf is a great book or whatever. We're not saying anything yeah. fucking edgy. We're like, yeah, we don't, we don't think Black Panther is that great of a movie. Mm. That is so, that. Some another person asked, "What's your favorite music album?" So I guess just <laughs> loads of people want to know that. <laughs> we fucking answered this already. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just like, "What?" Like I'm reading this one. Are any of you concerned that the the, the lack content entering the public domain? <laughs> I am. <laughs> What the fuck you what? <laughs> what? The the lack content entering the, lack the public domain. Content. No, I, I'm not I'm not concerned with that at all. I am. Not even a little I bit. I really am. What are you concerned? First okay. Let me hear your concern about the okay. lack of content entering public domain. So copyright law was not always the way that it currently is today. Originally, the copyright holder could only have rights over their uh, intellectual property for I think it was like fifty years. And then it changed to until the person had died, which I think is very fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it was person died plus 70, right? Now it's plus 70. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's like plus 20, and then it changed to plus 70. And the entire mm -hmm. irony behind this is that a lot of this was perpetuated by Disney, who was essentially just lobbying Congress people in the United States to change these laws for them. And the, the, the reason why that's incredibly ironic is because so many of Disney's titles, like their early animation, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, etc., those are public domain folklore fairy tales that they used to create their empire, and now they're trying to take away 
the ability for anybody else to do the same thing. If copyright law was how it was and wasn't changed by Disney, then Mickey Mouse would be public domain. But right now you can't, like no one can use Mickey Mouse. It's not public domain. They're always going to have control over it. And as soon as we get up to the point in time where they're reaching the expiry on their copyright, they'll fucking get Congress to change the law again. It'll be a never-ending cycle. So yeah, yeah I'm sure. concerned about it because I, 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 get I don't that, like... Adam. I get that. But there's a way of phrasing that question intelligently to provoke an interesting discussion, and that is not the way this person phrased the question. Well, you just well. have to you just have to <laughs> interpret their grammar. You have to fill in the blanks. Little. Yeah. I just want to say one more thing on that. Go. Okay. There's mm -hmm. like I love classical music. You know, I love hearing these classical themes play in films, but they get of so course. overused at this point. And if we had more songs in the public domain, then they wouldn't be as overused. We'd have more variety in terms of royalty-free music that can be used in films. Because right now we just get the same songs over and over and it pisses me yeah, off. Yeah, we get classical music and then like early 20s music. It's like, that's yeah, about it. <laughs> it's the same yeah. songs over and over and it's like, yeah. I, they're great songs, classical music is awesome, but we should mm -hmm. be adding more to the public domain. And I, I think that art should be something that people can use freely and express themselves with sure rights holders deserve to make money off of their properties but don't make it unlimited rights well do you think disney's going to keep going with the lobbying because i i of think course. i think i i think it's going to stop eventually hopefully <laughs> soon because how reckon? fucking long can you keep this going for exactly i mean i understand you can lobby but it's been what a hundred fucking years now yeah. <laughs> like there's a point where you gotta stop I don't think right, you so understand how corporately run America is. Well, I don't think course. you understand yeah. just how much power large corporations have in America. If you think that they they would just like be okay and put an end to it, like, oh yeah, we've had enough. We could make more money, but eh, why would we? Yeah, you think well, that's no? I'm not saying Ralph? they want. They obviously want to keep lobbying, but eventually, I feel like the system would go like, all right, enough of this shit. You can't fucking prolong these things for like life plus two hundred years. Now. When America has insane. a revolution. Ha. Yeah, <laughs> when we rise again, when 1776 happens again, like uh, Alex yeah. Jones said once. <laughs> All right. Interview with Chris Morgan. <laughs> so this actually turned out to be a good question, not the best phrased. Uh, yeah, so I'll take yeah. it back, this guy. Not the phrasing. This, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll take it back for this guy. I am concerned that the lack content entering the public domain. <laughs> so to round this, this shit off, there was one more person asking for the, the music thing again, and they deleted their comment. <laughs> And finally, it's gonna be a meme now. Uh, I was gonna ask you, Alex. I'm like, what do you think that person asked? And then, well, you oh, already. Got I think it. it's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, this is, a good is one. Black Panther a black exploitation film? No. Well, they didn't actually say they they spelled it black exploitation film. Yeah. He spelled, yeah, he spelled -A -A black exploitation wrong. Yeah. And that it's the stupidest, vaguely racist thing <laughs> that's ever been posted on Reddit. You haven't oh. been on much of Reddit then, have you? <laughs> at least at least on our fucking page. Oh, the movie has black people in it, so therefore it, it's a black exploitation movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like what? If the definition is going to be as loose as just any movie that's supposed to pander to a largely black audience, then sure. But I mean I, I don't think you know. that's a different because like exploitation films were like cheap, shitty movies made like way back when and then eventually the the black community just made movies, right? And they called it black exploitation because mm. it's exploitation with black people in it. And like mm -hmm. Black Panther's a two hundred million dollar fucking superhero movie with black people mm -hmm. in it. I, I just <laughs> so it's not the, even remotely the same. The definition, which mm -hmm. says the exploitation of black people, especially with regard to stereotyped roles in films. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, too. stereotyped roles. Okay, yeah, I didn't, I wasn't sure what the exact definition was. So yeah, yeah. under that definition, I would have to disagree that black. Panther is a black exploitation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's all of them. Thanks, Ralph, for that. I, I can't fucking brightening our days for that. Oh yeah, if a if a black person is singing, it's it go it counts as rap because anyone who's black and sings is a rap rapper. It's like saying what? that. That's what he's oh, fucking okay. saying. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even understand what you were going with there. <laughs> I'm so confused by what you said or tried to say. I'm just, but I'm just annoyed. Aren't so we all? On, let's move on to something more cheery, like the Avengers trailer. Oh fuck! Which also has Black Panther <laughs> in it. So uh, that's uh, we were we were trying to think of um, 
what we should be talking about because the whole first part of this podcast is like whatever's relevant, you know, before we get into our film discussion yeah. and other shit. And so we're like, what's relevant in movies right now? I don't know. I saw A Wrinkle in Time, but I don't think you guys did. Just really. No, a video I do want to discuss that with you um, at some point because that okay, looks, sure. it looks epically bad. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. It <laughs> so, was, uh, I've heard it's bad. It was my first one out of 10 since. Cloverfield really? Paradox, I guess. <laughs> that makes me want to watch it. <laughs> so we were thinking about what uh, what what is new and happening in the movie world, and unfortunately, uh, the only real relevant thing to talk about that everybody is talking about that's something that we can all have seen is the uh, new Avengers trailer. So uh, we watched mm -hmm. it. What do you guys you think? You sound fucking hyped. I'm just going to be honest. Like, let, let us hear your thoughts yeah. and feelings. I'm like really excited. I'm excited too. I'm shocked with with, with, with how much uh, enthusiasm I have right now. I literally am holding I a Red Bull in, in my hand, and I, yeah. I drank the whole thing, and somehow just the discussion of this movie at all has just killed all my energy. Mm -hmm. Before we began recording, we listened to your reaction, and you were whooping, you were howling. You sounded yes. freaking hyped. I'm being honest right now. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's Iron Man. Oh, my uh, God. And you were, like, clapping. I, I stood up and clapped. <laughs> yeah, in your own America. room by yourself. That's impressive, dude. Well, I guess for some uh, backstory, I haven't seen... Well, I kind of saw... What was the second one called? Age of Ultron? Yes. Uh, basically, that one's not was, very good. I was... I know. I was, like, vacuuming my house, and my roommate was watching it. And so every, <laughs> I would peek back into the room and, like, be cleaning different surfaces and getting shit done and watching it and being like, wow, this is uh, awful. And, yeah, um, you, you miss nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I just... I don't know what they expect me to have watched before this new movie to be able to be up to date on what's going on every um, one of them they usually do a good job of like keeping them like as long as you vaguely know what's happening you're, you're, you're okay <laughs> as like, long as you a, know a kid can sum it up like. i mean they're not complex yeah like i remember a kid summed it up to my mom once who was like sitting in front of us like oh yeah iron man has the fucking suit and they put all these guys together nick fury came in put all the guys together and then we watched age of ultron I remember at the end of um, Captain America 3, like the whole plot there was like, oh, you got to if you're going to be the Avengers first, you have to get every single action you do signed off by the bureaucratic powers at the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that still a thing happening right now in the universe or did some other movie kind of like throw that away or what's no, happening? As far as I know, that's still going on. Yeah, that has well, been last, last we heard they're since. in prison, right? Oh, like, all of them what, are in prison. when did yeah. that happen? Um, yeah, was that at the end of Captain America? End of Civil, yeah, Civil War. Okay. Did you see this movie? I did. <laughs> and <laughs> so it's, just, it's all, so forgettable. Like, like uh, it's, it's, it all just blends into the same fucking thing. Those Ugh. are the guys who are directing the new Avengers. They kicked off Joss okay. Whedon because they're like, you got to make Justice League too. <laughs> I think it's because he complained too much about the Age of Ultron. And him not yeah. having any real creative control over it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame him because Avengers. I I know I know you think it's okay, Adam, but I I think Avengers is a fucking great movie for what it yeah, is. Yeah, I love the first Avengers thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's fucking hilarious and and like the action's great and the character interactions are great. And then that all yeah. of that stripped away in the second one. So I don't. Blame Which is him. great. He was probably pissed. Which yeah, take take away all the all the good elements. <laughs> so I know there's going to be a lot of. Um fanboyish people that uh have the mindset of of like okay so they had avengers which was amazing they have avengers mm -hmm. age of ultron which was not so amazing but because yeah. that not so amazing movie happened now they'll know they'll like fix it this time or something and the and and, and i gotta say like as much as i would love to believe that my expectations for this new film are super fucking low because wow. if every single main character like main superhero character that appears in the film has had like three minutes of screen time the movie is going to be like three hours long you know like That's how can you make a concern. cohesive story about uh, out of this the the trailer kind of looks like a fucking mess there's like yeah. the shots of all of them running together and it's like 50 people now because that's yeah. how many characters there are it's... and i'm like there's no way they could give all these people equal i searched screen up time. how long the like current cut is or whatever mm -hmm. um we're looking at two and a half hours plus i think and this is like more. part one of two right i believe so yeah yeah it, it was going to be like literally part one part two they've since like separated it and managed yeah. to morph it into its own movie and then the other <laughs> one just... into its own movie but it's <laughs> basically a six hour one, movie so. yeah why not I, I people go see it i don't think people give a shit yeah i think people would love that i don't understand how they're 
how there's supposed to be any sort of cohesive story going on here with like 30 fucking characters well because it's all very simple the story is there's a god what the fuck is it is it purple homer simpson comes and he yeah wants purple some gems. homer simpson <laughs> wants some gems yeah that's that's it <laughs> He wants gems because they control the universe. If you control all the gems, you no! control the, the, the universe, <laughs> right? So, Marge. So, uh, Star-Lord. Can you please keep doing that, Alex? <laughs> Can you continue with your Homer Simpson impression, please, Alex? God. Yeah, that was a good one. You finally knelt down the uh, American accent, Alex. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm not when I, when, when I see that trailer, I don't think, oh, you know what? I think Adam from YMS is really going to see something in this movie. <laughs> yeah. This is a movie for him. This is definitely not for Adam I'm at just, all. I'm Adam, not. out of all of the Marvel movies, are there any that you even would say that you like? You know, I've given two of them a seven, and okay, I, but but I almost <laughs> you, feel you like re you regret it. <laughs> I almost feel like they should be a six now because I mean, like, ones? I give a lot of them like Guardians well, a decent is one, amount right? of them six. Yeah, Guardians like was one, and Guardians. Homecoming was one, and it was more just like I guess I was just like pleasantly surprised that it wasn't as bad as it could have been, sort of thing. <laughs> and maybe that just aff affected my my experience fresh off the bat. But I guess the biggest problem is like. After seeing the film in theaters once, both Guardians of the Galaxy and Spider-Man Homecoming, after seeing both of those and enjoying myself in the theater, just being like, ah, that was fun. It's like years go by and there's literally nothing bringing me back to it. There's nothing about it that's making me go like, I want to revisit this again, you know, because yeah. I got the experience and there's not like, you know, part of what I love about about film about cinema is, is being able to go back to something and getting a new experience from it or discovering something more about it that you didn't before. And a lot of great films are just so loaded with details, but I don't see that in Marvel films. The only thing that comes close to that in terms of details is just how many references to the other Marvel comics they have. Like, I'm sure if I was a huge Marvel nerd and I, I could I could go through the films frame by frame and be like "Ooh, I, that's a thing from this comic but it's like that's not that's not what i'm there for i'm more there for like the craft i'm more there for the directing the acting the cinematography the writing you know and it, it, those are just mm. <laughs> excuse me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah this I'm movie's making me sick <laughs> <laughs> i mean i get you but this is not everything you look for in a movie is not where you look to marvel for Basically. I know. Yeah, <laughs> these are so that's, not. That's as simple as that, pretty much. Yeah. Well, Rev, what what do you as... think? You're someone who you you like the Marvel movies. You enjoy. A fair I do. Film. I think Spider Man, you, what... the new one, is great. I think it's yeah. a great fucking movie for what it is. For what it is, again, it's not making mm. me rethink life, but for a Spider Man movie, like that's as good as you can get. As good as you can get. Oh, I'd debate that one. Uh, Sam about... Raimi was fucking. Yeah, awesome. Spider Man. All two. right, the Sam. We can put our nostalgia goggles on like oh no, spider-man no, no, 2 no, no, is perfect they're but objectively there's some, better there's some, I, yeah yeah, I yeah sure recently. but they're fucking I, they're corny as hell I didn't mean if to you were to ask me which but... one's better written i'd say the new one but in terms of style no. yeah, the old one and i no. do think uh yeah i think so and i, I think toby i, and I, I think too. i i kind of like tom holland better i felt like i was watching a kid made dumb mm. mistakes and acted like a kid and not like a not like a I 30 mean, year old dressed in glasses no, <laughs> pretends yeah, to get fine. bullied by a man who's 40 <laughs> i hear i hear you there <laughs> that's yes. funny like i mean this sam raimi films are always you know with a bit of cheese associated with them yeah and i don't mind it and i love this like i think i still think the what is it spider i was about to say the amazing spider-man 2 but no. spider-man 2 is better but um, I, I do think homecoming does certain aspects better the original uh, Raimi films, one and two, let's say, mm -hmm. they have things that this new Spider-Man film does not in terms of presentation and style. And, of course. Um, you know, like just the the amazing um, shot composition, those like 45 degree angles um, of course. that are mm -hmm. that are present in the film and like this mm -hmm. always moving camera cinematography. And the new one is just so like visually boring. You know, like that was the yeah, one thing that I was like, this, issue with it. The, the cinematography in the new Homecoming is just like, there's nothing going. It's like a Judd Apatow film, 
you know yeah. it's like shot reverse shot in so many of the scenes where it's like what kind of movie is this even it like it, the reason why 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 a lot of um shitty comedy movies are shot like that is because they're just banking on the actor being funny and that's the only yeah. reason that people go to it but it's they, like they can't I guess, do anything too dynamic with the camera in those movies because then yeah, you distract from the actor's performance uh, you can't do shit like that when the the, ca the actor's well, rambling on for an hour <laughs> trying to tell do that to tell that to edgar wright but um yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's he's an exception. He's a big exception. Now, the thing about Spider Man is, I I just thought what they did with him in Homecoming was like, man, you're just really missing a beat with with what Spider Man sh should be in terms of. Uh, when I think of the Sam Raimi movies, there's such an energy, and you can do so much like creative mm -hmm. stuff with the the spider powers specifically. Mm -hmm. Of course, like, yeah. I don't know if either of you guys have seen the trailer for this animated Spider Man film that's coming out by Sony. I can't remember what it's called. Is it like but, cartoon um, animated? Yeah, it's the like Black a cartoon. Spider -Man. It's got, I can't remember what it's called. There's some something of the Spider Verse, something like whatever. Yeah. But that film visually looks really interesting, and what I want to see out of the Spider Man mm -hmm. um, uh, kind of movie. Whereas Homecoming, it was like okay, it's more of a comedy, and the comedy wasn't really yeah. that engaging oh, yeah. to me. It was so. like a, it was more like a Ferris Bueller's Day Off than it is. Yeah. Superhero. Listen, want, no, want, I'm not. I'm not going to debate the directing because Sam Raimi. I think he's the only guy who's managed to make a movie that looks like a comic book without completely taking you out of, like, the, the grounded world it's set in, you know? Yeah. Like, you never feel like, oh, this is way too far into the Uncanny Valley. It also ha it had comic stakes, book though. Look. Like, the writing... It had stakes. Oh, the story yeah, it was her. like this perfect balance. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I agree everything with you. in Homecoming so is, comes down to a joke. Like, they undercut any potential weight with just a joke. Yeah. I think that, that until really the end, much because then Michael Keaton, there's a there's the twist of Michael Keaton, and I think from that point on, I'm like, oh, this is really interesting what they're doing with this. It was it so, was an interesting twist, and that's about of course. it. I still didn't... It, there, there really wasn't all that much weight or consequence overall. It was more... I don't know. Like, this, this, in the new Homecoming, it's, it's, it's like Spider-Man, his own story is kind of... Uh, secondary to this overarching Avengers story. He's just there I didn't feel that for the way bigger picture, you know? Like It's the it's the only Marvel movie where I felt like it was incorporated well, the fucking Avengers stuff. Because Tony Stark is there, but he's there as the father figure type eh. character. Like he serves his purpose in I it. fucking hate Tony Stark. But um, Damn dude. How? <laughs> I hate his character. I, really? I, yeah, he annoys the oh shit out of me. God. I was just gonna I'll I'll get into that in a second, but um, mm -hmm. I was going to bring in another aspect uh, comparing the Raimi films to the new Homecoming, the soundtrack. Go back and oh, listen yeah, to the fucking yeah. soundtrack. Tell, like, like, compare the soundtrack. Yeah, it's really you good. Know? Like, there's there's so much good composition, and it adds mm -hmm. so much to the original Spider-Man uh, films. Like, I want to watch them again right now is what I want to do. Like, just talking about the original two Spider-Man films, I'm just like, I, I want to just watch them right now. What about like, the third so one? so much emotional weight. <laughs> I will watch that, too, for different reasons, because it is pretty uh -huh. funny. Okay. I do like the third one, too, also. It's not oh, as bad man. as people but the first remember. two. No, it's not as they're bad. They're fantastic. It has some really bad things about it, but... Uh, that's why I'm glad The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2 exist, because they make you appreciate Spider-Man 3 more <laughs> yeah. for what it is. Because they're like, at least this is a fucking movie. <laughs> well, that was that was just a you know a, a prime example of conflict between director and studio because yeah. Raimi yeah. had his own ideas for what he wanted to do in the studio. Yeah. He was wanted like, to do well, Sandman, and they yeah, wanted and to like, do Venom, and he's like, "I'll put in both," and it doesn't work. He just didn't like Venom. He was like, "Ah, yeah, I'll put in Venom." Yeah, Assholes. And it feels so slapped <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. He, I'm gonna ruin. He Venom. destroyed it. He he pulled a Josh Trank. Did you see the new Venom yeah. trailer with Tom Hardy? Where they, they, oh, they oh, literally so bad. they finished shooting like two days before they cut that trailer, <laughs> so they had serious? none of the effects done, and that's why Venom's not in it. <laughs> it. It looked like one of those fan cut YouTube trailers that people make. Yeah, no, yeah. it looked like a fake trailer. It looked like they took footage of Tom Hardy and like fucking Legend and Bronson and just like put it in yeah. and put some like trailer music over it. It was so bad. Wonder if that's gonna be good. Yeah. <laughs> I, it might be, but like that's not a good trailer, and it was a stupid idea to release it like that without oh, of any of the effects done or color correction. It's it's going to be one of those Sony movies. It's not mm -hmm. going to be a Marvel movie. It's going to be a Sony movie. I mean, yeah, it yeah. technically so. already is, but it, like now it's confirmed that it's not even... It, you can't expect anything else from it. Mm -hmm. 
I just feel bad for like the the fanboys who have no idea what the movie making process is or like how much influence a studio or a director has and they're just like, "Ooh, Venom." You know, yeah, I feel bad for them because they're not going to get a good movie out of it. <laughs> but Tom Hardy is that kind of actor where if he's involved in something, I feel like there's got to be something to it. You know, like he doesn't sign mm -hmm. on to just schlock. He doesn't. No, you can. What has he done that's don't... ever been schlock? What was the that worst movie thing where I can think was of? Like, there was like two of him. He would, oh, he Legend. Was that's not a bad movie. movie. It was, and uh... that's another thing is that any movie he's in, he makes it instantly better by being in it because he's so fucking good. And Legend's that movie where it's like, this movie sucks, but because he's in it and because he's mm. so good, it makes it watchable. So, you know, for I Venom, I'm like, it. listen, you got this great actor and he's he saw something in this movie. Unless they <laughs> fucking, they, they drove a dump truck full of money to in front <laughs> of his house. <laughs> unless I'll watch that's it either case. way. It's yeah, just, it's, and I don't expect it to be good at all. <laughs> I, 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 it could be something. I have, I'm not going to, I have some hope for it. I'll say that. Mm. I guess uh, just really quickly, I I kind of left um, that open ended on why I hate uh, Tony Stark so much. I just oh yeah, oh yeah, and everything I've seen him in at this point, like I I hate his um, his character is kind of fucking elitist in the uh, Avengers universe, yeah, and he really great. at this point just serves as a plot device for conflict. Where he has to show up and be like, "No, that's not the way we do things." And literally in Civil War, in fucking Homecoming, like he just—he's just this fucking asshole. It does have motivation behind it, though. Of I'd course, say. that's why I was based totally on fine the previous it. movies. I'm just saying mm -hmm. I hate his character. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying I hate him. I think yeah. he's the best character in in the whole fucking thing because of that. Because yeah, so. he starts out as a total dick, and he's still kind of a dick at this point. But he's he's learned a few lessons along the way. He's like, okay. I'll, I'll I'll try to be a good person. I'll do my best, even though I'm still an asshole. And I cannot I tell you how much I disagree with his decision making in Captain America: Civil War. You're acting in this world where there's aliens with superpowers that could like obliterate the fucking planet at the push of a button. You know, you really you really fucking think that the Avengers shouldn't be able to act in any way unless you go through this whole like five day bureaucratic process to get every single signature from the UN I'm sorry that's stupid see I don't I, I saw it as more of like uh, he was guilty for all the things he'd done in the past like in the previous yeah. Avengers he, he made totally a, a killer robot that caused the deaths of like <laughs> Hundreds of people, and he probably yeah. that was weighing on him, and that was his reason oh, yeah. for trying to. Uh -huh. And then he's like, I need to, "Someone needs to put there. some restraint on us." They didn't throw it in. They did it they in the last movie. Did. No, because <laughs> in that last movie, it totally works. He created fucking Ultron, which destroyed half the half that with the, that whole city, basically. Sorry, which mm. right? which last movie? Uh, Age of Age Ultron. Age of Ultron. Oh, okay. Age of Ultron. <laughs> well, I have watched that. <laughs> the, yeah. The one you, the one you have. Yet. Did you see a city floating up in the air? The, that's what he was referring to. I think they were showing yeah. footage of Age of Ultron at the beginning of Civil oh, yeah. War, right? That, no, They're no. Like, they, they, they had, like, footage for some reason of, like, the whole of city the first Avengers, floating right? up in the air. No, the second Avengers. Oh. They have footage of the second Avengers in Civil War of the second yeah. Avengers when they fought in that city. And like, yeah. it's all levitating and people are dying and they're like, guys, look at this footage. And it's like, what the fuck I just, are you showing him this? The reason why it feels thrown in and don't get me wrong, they obviously have a setup because it's Marvel and they have the next 20 years planned out. Like they'll mm -hmm. obviously have a film before it setting up this plot device. But the reason why it feels thrown into me is because you have all these films previous to it where it's just like, you know, the first Avengers where buildings destroyed and like crowds decimated but it's okay because you can't really see them too well so it's like pg fucking violence it's okay it's okay to show like millions of people die as long as it's not close up and yeah. and it's just like they they never really touched on that until it was clear that they needed to use it as a plot device you know it was like mm -hmm. oh now they're humanizing these crowds of people you know well, sure but that's like so many I films existed before that point where they literally just pretended like oh yeah whatever I, I get that, but I, I can't it's even It's just something it. that's going to bug just, you. It doesn't or bother me at all. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't bother me at all. Because this is this fucking stupid comic book movies. And the fact that they even yeah. have a little bit of a threat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but they have a little bit of a threat and they're trying. And at least the characters are consistent. So I'm like, it all right. Uh, it, it feels maybe for you, but for me, it feels fine. It's mm -hmm. better than whatever the fuck DC is doing. Or well, yeah, uh, like this it, is true. It's, <laughs> in 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 Man of Steel, when he's flying around leveling the, literally the entire city with people, <laughs> yeah. sh it's showing people being lifted into the air and then smashed into the ground into a yeah. pulp. 
with him like barely so even trying to save violent. anyone. Like, yeah. And then you got Justice League, and it's like a fucking cartoon. It's yeah. Like they they Man. clearly have no idea what they're doing. I think the only DC movie that I've seen is Suicide Squad. <laughs> oh, that's a good really? one to start out with. That movie is total shit. Well, yeah, Man of Steel came out, and I was I was still working at fucking Best Buy, and my, <laughs> my really? uh, yeah, and my uh, coworker came up to me and was talking about. It. He's like, I liked it, but I don't think it's something you would like. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> like the trailer didn't look. <laughs> the trailer didn't look very good, and so I was like, okay, well, let's ignore that. And then, what was it? They had a Man of Steel two. They had like a second Superman or something. No, it was or was Batman that just Batman v Superman? Superman. Yes, Batman v Superman. Did they have anything in between that? Because it felt no. like a long gap. It's, I, yeah, it I was always a long felt gap. it weird that as soon as j- the DC universe decided to start this whole expanded connected universe, they were like, "No, let's not start fresh. Let's let's continue it from Man of Steel because that worked out so well." Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. find that such a weird thing to do because it's clear they didn't make Man of Steel with the intention of that starting out a connected universe, did they? No. Yeah, they no. did. Did they? Sure? I think that no, I totally think they did, but they're, a they're again they're gap. idiots. There is a huge gap. I think they wanted to do it and they wanted to see if Man of Steel would do well, which it did. So they're like, okay, so now we're gonna greenlight all these other movies that are gonna come out within four, uh, yeah, yeah. like two years of each yeah. other. But Marvel did it much better. They they made Iron Man, and when Iron Man did well, they had the Hulk on the way, and they're like, okay, let's just put in this teaser at the end of it to yeah. set up Avengers, and because they because they're somewhat intelligent mm-hmm. and have a, somewhat of a plan. <laughs> Unlike DC. So I didn't see that. And then uh, as every single other movie came out, they looked like things where I was like, okay, well, this looks funny enough to make fun of. But then I see the runtime, like Mm -hmm. Batman v Superman. I'm like, I don't want to be stuck in a theater for three hours. So I didn't see it. Fucking Mm -hmm. Justice League. Like, holy shit. That looks like that that looks painful. painful. Yeah. Why Mm -hmm. would I want to be in there that long for something that's just excruciating? Whereas Suicide Squad was what? Under two hours or something. And so when I saw the the uh, early reviews on Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes coming out for them. I'm like, wow, 13%. I got to see this. <laughs> so I went and saw it. And yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's it, it should the have been only longer, one Suicide I've seen. Squad. Suicide the Squad, they cut out I've half seen. the fucking movie to the point where it doesn't make sense. <laughs> sorry, Jared Leto. <laughs> yeah, sorry, everybody. Sorry, David Ayer. We're going to take your movie yeah. and have a trailer house edited. No, he did Bright after it. He doesn't deserve any. Mm, oh, yeah, Bright. Mm, he <laughs> He's like, I'm going to make a comeback with Bright. <laughs> it's about it's racial commentary, except they're orcs. Wow, <laughs> you're fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Max Landis. <laughs> it's a funny film. Ugh. Yeah. So going back to the topic at hand. Ralph. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what what did what do you actually think of the trailer and uh, are you excited to oh, see I didn't Infinity watch it. Man? I didn't watch the new one. Oh. Oh you know, <laughs> that's, that's a fucking I, topic, Ralph. Of of course Remember I know. I'm like before the podcast started and I said I'm gonna take a minute to watch the trailer. I thought that that was an implication for for you guys to also watch <laughs> the trailer. I, I watched the first one, I'm like, yeah, I get the idea. I don't want to spoil it for myself. So oh, okay. I'm looking that's, forward to that's it. Fair. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. You do for like the Avengers Infinity War what I do for like my absolute favorite movies of all time, like my favorite directors. It's just I, just I don't, don't watch, watch trailers trailer. ever. I just kind of ever kind of hate trailer. No, not yeah? really. Yeah, unless I'm forced to watch it in a theater okay. and I'll watch it. But like, I mean, first of all, I think most trailers just stink and they're boring. Yeah, they and I assume yes. that that Avengers trailer was like Bwah! on an opening shot of a city and then they throw in a joke mm. and then they fight a bit and then they show the title. There's a little bit of yeah. I mean, it the trailer spoils nothing. Yeah, I it's bet just it it's like show everyone's favorite characters from all of the things, mm-hmm. and they're fighting, and fucking Master of the Universe Guardian Man from the Guardians of the Galaxy says something funny. You show Teenage yeah. Groot, and then it's like the title, and then Spider Man's like, haha, uh-huh. uh, my name's <coughs> Peter, and. Doctor Strange says, I'm Doctor Strange, and Spider-Man says, oh, okay, I get it, so we're using our fake names, well, I'm Spider-Man, and that was the joke, and that was the end of the trailer. So sorry if I mm-hmm. spoiled that experience <laughs> for you. Uh, no one was. I'm sorry that one can't be genuine in the theater, because that was a great scene. I saw that Civil War trailer, and they have Spider-Man at the end of it, and I think if I didn't see that trailer, it would have been a big surprise. That would have been like, wow, Ooh. Spider-Man. Oh, but they God. spoiled it. That's part of the reason I don't watch trailers anymore. Speaking of which, did you know that Denis Villeneuve wanted to keep 
uh, Harrison Ford's oh. involvement in Blade Runner 2049 a secret. God damn but it. Sony just used him for the market. Could you imagine how effective that would have been? That would have been amazing. Of oh, course. yeah, because it, it's not like he serves so, a huge purpose in the, the film, story. It, that even yeah. shows yeah. up. And, he, and it seems like he constructed it with that in mind. Like oh, that course. scene when That's he how enters. The constructed. Yeah, like he enters that lair and it's like yeah. 20 minutes long of him like walking in and stepping over the wire that has like the shotgun on the end of it or whatever, the, the trip wire. And he comes out of the shadows. He's like, holy shit. Except we all saw the trailer. So yeah. we know it's just Harrison Ford in a t shirt. <laughs> and it's unfortunately impossible to experience the movie in that way because he's right on the fucking poster, too. Like, if you go mm -hmm. to see the movie, if you buy the film, you see him. And there's no way to not see him. And yeah. I, I was actually very impressed because I, I had a friend that I showed the movie who had no idea. <laughs> and he mm -hmm. was able to experience it that way, which I was very happy about. I told him after the fact. That's cool. Because he didn't, I, I put in the Blu-ray for him, I guess. I didn't even know that he saw none of the marketing. So good for him. Mm -hmm. The one person that got to experience <laughs> the movie in the way it was intended. Fuck. The way it was intended. Yeah. Fuck well, you, good, Sony. Fuck yes, you, I don't, Sony. I don't like <laughs> you yeah, assholes. Off. I mean, the best trailers aren't even the ones that unveil any kind of plot. It's just the they, they mm -hmm. build a certain mood and like, oh, this mm -hmm. is the kind of this is the kind of movie you're watching. But we're not going to tell yeah. you. I think the last great trailer I saw was the Killing of a Sacred Deer one, where the girls singing, uh, "We're going to let it burn, mm. burn, burn," and it's just like shots of Colin Farrell fucking like running through a hospital, <laughs> and yeah. you're like, I don't know what the hell this is about, but this looks awesome. Those are the most effective trailers. There's certain directors where you can tell they have more control over the trailers that they release. Yeah, definitely. I think Chris Nolan's one of those guys. Yeah. Uh, honestly, because all of his trailers are fucking amazing. I don't know how he does it unless mm -hmm. he has a really good team of people doing the marketing. Yeah, who knows? I think he probably yeah. has a lot of creative control considering yeah. every movie he makes is a huge success. So yeah, why mm -hmm. wouldn't he? Yeah. So th they just let him do whatever he wants, which is crazy. But mm hmm. That was actually a very dense topic. I, I wasn't expecting us to talk about Marvel. The for that Infinity long. War trailer provoked a lot of discussion. Yeah, mm -hmm. good shit, guys. I'm proud of you, Adam, for talking about Marvel for so long. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, uh, I, I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, go so for it, Ralph. Next topic? Oh, are we talking about the fucking movie now? It's uh, the one that you suggested. Yeah, there's something you were, for that. You wanted us to talk oh, about our is? video making processes. Oh my god, we did. Remember? Oh yeah, that's, that that was your thing. suggestion. Remember how you suggested? Oh that? yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot. <laughs> I have a shitty memory, like Alex. What do you mm. want me to do? Okay, so I I got. I was thinking of this topic because I watched this. I watched this guy recently. I watch him with my roommate mainly. It's this channel called. Uh, I don't know if I should name him because I'm gonna be kind of mean. Okay. Uh, Movie Bob. This. <laughs> No, no. He 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 also makes shitty videos, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay. The DSLR guide. It's this oh, he's my age. Oh, that guy. He's my age. He makes uh, videos, tutorials on how to make film. Well, he used to anyway. Now he just kind of makes either pretentious videos of him talking about films he's never seen or like like uh I make films that speak. This is my process. And this kid has no idea what he's doing. He has no idea how to budget films. You know, has no idea how to edit anything. He doesn't know how to make deadlines for himself. He's like the most incompetent fucking guy. He doesn't go to film school and he puts it up on like, he's like, I don't waste money on film school. I sit at home and, and make films with my DSLR. And he's made like one short film his whole life. And I just fucking can't stand this kid. <laughs> so what I want to do, I want all of us, because we're all relatively, you know, uh, good at what we do whether it's music or making videos or whatever, I want us to yeah, talk about... Two our... of us are. <laughs> who, who are those two? Are we just supposed to guess? Oh, it's yeah, me and Alex, right? I think it speaks it's me and for Alex. itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever you, whatever you uh, want to believe. <laughs> me and Alex, yeah. So I want us to talk about our process because I there's too many people on the internet who act like, oh, if you do this on YouTube, you can get famous. Or if you make a movie like this and blah 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 you can be famous it's like this none of this shit works so i want to talk about our process how we make videos how we do whatever we do on our pastime because i think i think it'd be an interesting conversation that's that's all i got to say <laughs> take it Who's take it away one? one of you so, who wasn't talking as much as i was <laughs> Ooh, who was that i want to know about your art because you're a damn good artist. I'd never mm, fucking... Not like a damn good artist, but... You are. Anyway. He's a good artist. Like 
<laughs> good autist, thanks. A good uh, autist yeah. and a good Sometimes artist. Sometimes you just got to separate art from the autist. Well, what's your experience with art? Uh, do you have any? Do you have you been doing this since you were a kid and you just wanted to do it art? Was ever so, yeah, I've always been like drawing quite a lot, mm -hmm. especially in I don't know what it's called for you guys. Secondary school? I don't know what the equivalent is for you guys. Is that like junior high? Uh, you're is? like a teenager, so yeah, um, yeah, junior high probably. You know, you have like useless lessons to you, like French and RS. Mm -hmm. uh, those mm -hmm. those are my art lessons. Um, I just draw in them. And it's just something you continue doing through through the through the years. Like I've just been mm -hmm. doodling for a long time. I've never called myself an artist or anything, but it's just something I, I like to do. You're yeah, a doodler. doodler I'd wow. say more though, so than an actual artist. So you, you know, you've never I'm like a taken any art classes. You've never gone to I don't know college for any of this shit or no. You you just do it. Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> why is that, why is that fascinating? Like it's just you put a, pe put a pencil in your hand and then you just put a pen to paper or pencil to paper. Well, I mean, it's self improvement, right? The more time you dedicate to something, the better you'll you'll get. Yeah, it's so kind long of as, simple as you're as that. being self critical in a constructive yeah. way. If you yeah. believe mm -hmm. that the first thing you make is this masterpiece that everybody <laughs> you should be lucky to see, then you'll never get good at what you're doing. But you got you got to have some sort of self criticism, and then no matter what you do, as long as you're doing it over and over, you'll get better. The same thing goes for making videos. Like the first video you make is going to be a huge pile of horse shit. Uh, uh huh. Yes. And it's just through making a ton of them that they gradually start to get better in terms well, of when did technical you guys ability. Start? Or, with all that, with editing videos on YouTube specifically? Nine years ago or something like that? Nine years ago. Not seriously not, no. until like 2012 or something. But before yeah, then I was like dabbling in it and always had an interest in it and would use YouTube guides and Google mm -hmm. to like learn how to do things and how to improve and you gradually, you will start on like whatever your um, OS is like shittest built-in media editor is yeah, so like Windows movie, movie maker, maker iMovie. yeah yeah you start with that and you learn the ropes and then you find out about well you are you go onto every YouTuber who's already been making videos and you spam a million comments what do you use to edit your videos mm -hmm. and then and then you you just learn through through doing it I don't know I, I guess you guys did the same thing you guys yeah, go to classes about... to learn how to edit YouTube videos no not really I mean eventually you go into classes to learn how to edit I mean I do it anyway because I'm in college but I want to hear Adam about his his fucking well I as you can anyway. probably imagine I have a lot to say about this so mm -hmm. <laughs> I kind of I kind of want you guys to to I mean Ralph you haven't really said anything I started making movies. Of course, I wasn't fucking good at it at all at first. Like when I was like five or six, like in my basement. And then yeah. 12 is when I started learning editing and all that shit. I used to fucking just record on CDs. And like whenever I stopped recording, that would be the take. And that was it. And I would like make whole movies like that without editing. And then eventually when I was like 12 or 13, I started editing. And much like what Alex did. You get better and better at it. Around 16 is when I started to actually get somewhat decent. Uh, what did you guys... I, I started mm -hmm. with like Windows Movie Maker, and then I moved on to... My, my teacher gave me Final Cut for free on a, nice. on like a CD. Because he's like, Ralph, you, you, I love what you're doing, man, even though what I did sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, here's, here's Final Cut for free. And I learned Final mm -hmm. Cut on my own. And yeah, from there, you, fuck, you just get good at it. Now I use uh, Premiere. That's what I use to edit now. But I'm also learning Avid, which is what the the industry uses, and that shit's a pain in the ass. But yeah, yeah. I want to hear what I want to hear what. Uh, basically, what we're all I think we're gonna say is that you just got to edit a lot, and that's how you get good at it. It's it's, it's not even just yeah. with like editing. Just any any skill you want to yeah, improve. Any skill. Doing it a lot is gonna improve it. Mm -hmm. And we've so all consistently gotten better. Of course, yeah, and yeah. we've all consistently gotten better. I don't even think, because when you're 12 years old, you can't even be self-critical because you, you're an idiot and you think everything you do is great. That's why the, the internet's such a great place because people will tell yeah. you your, your shit is fucking horribly edited and you suck, which is what I'm telling Simon Cade right now, is that you don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> so you need, you need to get your act together. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> I'm not familiar, <laughs> super familiar with this. Oh my god! But... So this guy has. A, oh, sorry for going on a tangent. I've seen like oh, all I don't this mind. guy's videos. I do it all the time. He, he, <laughs> fucking, he has this video about his writing process. So he's like, I go out in the forest 
and I fucking I sit in the forest and I write down ideas on a notebook. And he films himself for like an hour writing down ideas. And it's like that's not how you fucking write anything. You don't you don't force yourself to sit in a forest for four hours and come up with a fucking idea. It's like the dumbest shit I've ever heard. He talks about budgeting. And he's like, you're supposed to take 50% of the budget and put it into the story. And it's like, what the fuck does that mean, the story? <laughs> what 50% of the money that needs to go into the story? He has no fucking idea what he's doing. Sorry. Well, oh, I can don't rant apologize. About him more later. <laughs> I just Let can't stand this fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be okay. Uh, sorry. Continue. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Adam, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I was a little baby boy. Not a baby, I guess like a preteen or whatever. My brother had made some uh, YouTube video, or not YouTube, sorry, it didn't exist back then. He made a, a school project, uh, essentially, called Leave What You Find. And it was just this, you know, dumb thing for his outdoor ed class. And um, I, you know, he showed, you know, some friends and I just happened to be watching. And I just, I found that to be uh, fascinating. You know, it, it was just like a dumb handy cam made video with some dumb editing that went along with it and I, I was just like immediately I was I was just thinking like oh crap I want to do I want to do something like that where I can you know have some you know create something and make something funny and you know I felt like I had some stuff to express anyway and so you know I was 13 years old uh and basically at any point uh in my in any of my classes where I could potentially make a video project instead of a written project, if there was like an assignment we had to do or some sort of essay, I would just ask the teacher with with my friends being like, hey, can we make a video instead? And a lot of them would be like, yeah, sure. And so mm -hmm. I would use it as an opportunity just to make some dumb fucking video that <laughs> that basically met the <laughs> the bare minimum requirements for being educational. <laughs> yeah. And, and other, otherwise, shit. it was just me being annoying. And um, you just well, you wanted to experiment and see like, oh, what can I do yeah. with this? What I just, kind of film, crazy film thing can I do with this? Yeah, and you know, being thirteen years old, like the humor is the most cringeworthy thing that ever has existed oh, on the planet. Course. And so I did that for a while and um was filming a bunch of my own videos using software called Pinnacle Studios. And I was using a mini D V like high oh eight God. or whatever tape. I think, tape I, think I know what this is. Oh yeah, I think, the editing stuff. I think I know this. Yeah, it was so basic. You could only have like two oh, audio tracks. Oh my god! Tracks. And so yes, like, <laughs> at the point in time when um when I you know started making things that needed more than two two extra audio tracks, I would basically have to like export the entire project, bring it back in, and yeah. then add more audio tracks. I did the same shit with Windows Movie yeah. Maker. You only had, had like, one, so you had to keep exporting and exporting and exporting. Oh man, on the scene. And so, um, yeah, eventually, uh, like on my 16th video, I made something called Half Dead, which was just a drama project. Mm -hmm. And my drama teacher was like, wow, that's really good. And like really, you know, enjoyed it. And then cut to uh, high school where, you know, I continued making dumb videos. I had gotten, you know, a bit better at it over time. And my friend Joe was like, hey, you should ask uh, the drama teacher if there's any projects we can do for videos. Because, like, my close friends were just as gung-ho for doing it. They were just as enthusiastic about it. And so I was like, okay. So I, literally the very beginning of the year, I think, like, one of the first first days of school. And I asked the drama teacher, hey, is there anything uh, coming up in the semester where I can where we can do video projects instead of, uh, instead of uh, otherwise? And she was like, you know what? It would be kind of cool if uh if you did a documentary for the school play and she was literally casting the school play later that day we were doing a they were doing a production of um oh, what's that christmas one with uh uh scrooge or not scrooge um what's the, what's that fucking it's christmas day a, a chris what is that called christmas story is yeah, that christmas what it's called story no uh, uh no it's a wonderful life christmas carol Christmas Carol. A Christmas Carol. That's it. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, oh, and so they were doing a production of that for the school play, and they had just started casting that day. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Literally went home, grabbed my camera, came back when they were doing the casting after the school, and just started filming that very day. And mm -hmm. um, it turned into this huge fucking project. Where by the end of it, I had I had an hour long documentary, and it's up on YouTube <laughs> if you want to see it. It's not that great. Um, but I would consider this experience to be the single most invaluable experience I had in terms of me, 
growing as um, an editor or a content creator, it's because I was given so much responsibility and I was under a very limited time frame. I was essentially going literally like there, there are main characters that were cast in the play that their rehearsals were like twice a week, but I showed up to every single rehearsal. I would go like every, every day after school that there was a rehearsal, I would just film and, and, um, you know, practice my camera work. And then on top of that, because of the extreme limitations that I had with both the editing software and the shitty computer I was using at the time, and also the fact that I was recording onto tapes, fuck, to get, to mm -hmm. get the footage onto yeah. the computer, I essentially had to connect cables to the camera and then press play and watch the whole thing go by as it was literally recording onto the computer. And so I kept having to essentially burn discs worth of footage to, to have as my backup to get shit off of my computer as shit was coming in so fast. I like didn't sleep for like a month, basically. I was <laughs> like the whole process went over over the course of like several months. Like the it was a Christmas play. And um yeah, yeah man, it like it killed me in terms of my um my sleep schedule, of course. I literally I just basically didn't sleep. I would just just do that all night. But the fact that I I was um under so much pressure kind of really brought out a lot of um, learning experience for me. And I, I consider that to be just incredibly invaluable. And I uh, am very thankful that uh, my drama teacher at that point in time was just like, yeah, sure. Because, you know, if I it, any other teacher, who knows, like might have just said like, yeah, I don't know, you know, yeah, not given not someone that I mean, they didn't know, just it. some sort of huge responsibility. And by the end of it, I um. I printed some DVDs. There's a spelling error on the back of it. It's <laughs> and um, I did that too with the DVDs. Yeah. just for myself. And, um, usually, one. Copy. I well, I you know I gave them out at the uh, you know at the end of the play or whatever. We had a screening where the school watched, and it was awesome. It was very, very wow. fulfilling, very educational and growing experience that was not a part of the school curriculum at all but mm -hmm. was uh, due to helpful. a teacher just, you know, giving me some sort of responsibility. And it was really yeah. cool. And so, yeah, it's this thing is on my um, my abandoned YouTube channel called Dark Ocean Films. Mm -hmm. And there's it's a four-part thing that's on YouTube. And it's not that great. But for a fucking, how old was I? 15? Yeah. Something. something. I think I was like 15 years old. Gotta start for somewhere. a 15-year-old making a fucking exactly. hour-long documentary, it's not that bad. For like one camera and just me editing the whole thing, it's not that bad. But it's Adam, you totally, bad. you totally reminded me of this. I had a film festival every year that I went to in uh, in what juniors? I had junior high school and high school were like the same school for me. So seventh mm -hmm. grade to twelfth grade was the same school. So there was always this film festival. And then uh, when I was fifteen, I made a movie called Paper Bag, and it's a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. But I, it's like it's like private on my YouTube channel. Uh, but I made it when I was fifteen. And then I sent it out to people who were like film critics I liked. I sent it to Red Letter Media. They didn't respond, obviously. Then I sent it to Adam. This is 15-year-old Ralph. And this is when Adam had, I think, got like 30,000 subscribers or something. And I sent it to Adam to watch it. Me? And then Adam, yeah, you. Oh. Swear to God. And you went like, hey, kid, this is pretty good. You got potential. Oh, really? Uh, yes. And then you fucking <laughs> sent me over to that channel, that, that whatever it's called. What's it called? Dark Horse... <laughs> uh, dark ocean films dark ocean films dark you sent me the dark ocean films like here's the movies i made when i was that oh, age cool. he, and then i was like wow so like i mean that's part of why i wanted to do this is because it encourages people to just you know if if you get people who I, I don't know what i'm trying to say who appreciate the craft to like watch your work and even give some feedback like i'll watch some if fans sent me something that they made when they're 16, I'll watch it and go like, "Oh, this is this is a cute little thing. Keep at it. Here's mm -hmm. what we can improve." I think I think it does a lot. I don't think we should undervalue like some advice we give because I think, you know, I think there's some kids who watch us who could make some really good stuff if they had some encouragement from people. You know, yeah. I don't think they get enough. I you know I I luckily had you know a teachers who who really supported me and wanted me to do this stuff and gave me stuff to do edit to edit you know news stories or whatever the fuck for their shitty news station in the school <laughs> or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah it's it's some it's important yeah I, I, uh, that's good that you had that uh, experience with your teachers that's yeah. crazy that uh, I responded to you 
Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> the, no, I don't remember. I'm because the movie's really a piece funny. of shit. <laughs> I don't, I don't blame you. Oh, it's now amazing. I want to see this again. You have to show me. Oh, if well, you're not going to show the rest of the world, you have to show me. I'll show this video. I want to see if doing, I remember it. One day I want us to post all post like old shitty videos we made. Mine are still like, up. <laughs> yeah, yours are still up. But like, just yeah. imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I wow. I never. Um, it's very rare that I would get so embarrassed of something that I made in the past that I that I would like take it down because I just I very much see value in showing growth and showing yeah sure because I mean if it's more impressive to have started from making shit and be making great content than it would be if you just you know first time you try is just the most amazing thing in the world you know and and then you, you haven't changed over the course of ten years you know. Mm-hmm. That would be a little weird if you've never grown, and I think of it. Does, I think it should encourage people in in a sense because a lot of people get incredibly discouraged by not being able to do something perfect right off the bat. But that's not how things are made. You know, no, no, that's no. not how not. you, you gotta grow really work hard at it. a talent. You know, a great mm-hmm. thing to do on YouTube is um, go to some of your favorite channels, and and you can sort by the oldest video they've uploaded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go to their original few videos and see what they're like compared to how they are now, and it's usually yeah. quite a good indicator of growth and start. improvement. Yes, and like yeah. most of my f- early videos are just I deleted them or privated them. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> literally so they're unwatchable. Like I'm humiliated uh-huh. when I watch them. But I was like 12 too, so I, like even when I watch yeah. videos from like a year ago, I made I'm like, eh, this is. Eh. Oh man, I'm so happy YouTube didn't exist when I was 13. Yeah, dude. Yeah, these are <laughs> my that, voice is like be so a, damning. It's even worse than it is now. <laughs> it's even of more course. annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just imagine a high pitched version of this, and you might want to fucking kill yourself listening to it. That also uh, reminded me that I had a similar experience with um, Anissa Joma, who is uh, a streamer and content creator and iDubbbz's girlfriend, yeah. and. Um, she apparently lived in the same city as me, and we sent each other videos back in the day. I'm like, what? I had to remember. Yeah, now, like after she mentioned that on her stream, and somebody sent that to me, I was like, oh, is this the, is this the video where her brother wore a helmet and then acted really dumb? And I remembered. What it. kind of videos, Adam? <laughs> what kind of videos did I you remember, send each other? I remember he said, "Shave you mm. first," and then that's the only takeaway from that. But... Are those the only kinds of videos you sent? Mm. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. Mm. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 All right. You just mentioned yeah. um, you look back at videos from like a month ago and you see things that like you don't. Like I, I don't know about a month, order. but like a year. Um, yeah. I'm curious with you guys how um, you know the the phrase you're your own worst critic. Um, how much that applies to you guys in terms of how I don't know fussy you are in terms of just everything to do with your videos. You know, I'm my own toughest critic. I don't know if I'd say worst critic. But I think sorry, that's, that's, what, what, that's meant, what I right? meant. Sorry, yeah, that's what I meant. Come on, Alex, get with it. You fucking. Well, I'm brick. sorry, okay. <laughs> My own. Yeah, I think. Well, when you first start off, you, you make mistakes, and you go, "Ah, eh, whatever. No one's gonna notice. No one's gonna give yeah. a shit." But then you realize people do, so you you, you slowly get better at the whole, <laughs> the whole uh, editing yourself down, and you know, composing yeah. things better. And, mm. I guess every aspect. Like, okay, how many times do you check a video before you like render it? I used to very often. I, I now I'm once. comfortable enough with my own process that, you know, a couple times is enough. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I usually, yeah. before I export it, oh no, I, I export it and then I watch it while I'm uploading it to YouTube. And if there's something wrong, I just cancel the upload and re-edit it. Because most of the time I know that there's not going to be a mistake. I am so hyper aware of things like extra frames now that I can usually just catch them on my couple yeah. couple watches yeah. anyway there's no need to go over it way too many times and that's um, when that's when you're like editing something that's like a already edited like a movie and then there's like yeah, one exactly. frame of a different shot and then it cuts to the next thing <laughs> yeah. yeah that's so hyper aware of that i just want to explain that, that, that just, to people who don't know by the I'm way just looking if, for them at this point yes of course if you're if you're editing something up and comers you know be be wary of that mm-hmm also be wary of audio quality because yes. that's probably that's something I've Ralph. learned over the years. And I'm, yeah, I'm still not I'm still not good at it, but I'm getting better. I'm taking an audio production class yes. right now, just trying nice. to fucking learn how all this works. Yeah, great. I mean that that's the thing you got to get better and better at this stuff because otherwise you're Simon Cade in the basement 
with your with your shitty ass camera from five years ago fucking learning nothing honestly audio is one <laughs> of the most important things when it comes to youtube like nothing makes me turn off a video faster than the audio just being terrible i don't mm -hmm. know about you yeah. guys but well, the thing is most people watch videos on their phones so the video mm -hmm. quality isn't even that important what's really yeah, exactly. important is the audio quality because they're either watching it you know uh with earbuds in which are really high quality or just on their speakers, which are still pretty good, mm -hmm. you know? So the audio quality is way more important in, on YouTube than it is the, the video. A lot of people watch videos while they're multitasking. A lot of people, you know, yeah. like even if it's a video like mine, like a review or a quickie, a lot of people have commented being like, yeah, I just, you know, I listen to this while I'm, you know, getting ready or exercising or driving or whatever, where yeah. they don't really even need the visual representation, I guess. There's a certain amount of people like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, I, I like to put a decent amount of thought into the visuals for sure for the people that appreciate it and for myself. But, you yeah, know, same. a lot of I, I would say that the audio is most important. Yeah. I mean, it's part of it, too, is when you first start out, you don't know how to make audio sound good or you don't read. You know what good audio is, obviously, but yeah. you don't know quite how to work it. You don't understand the processing of it. You oh, don't understand, man. you know, that different kinds of mics do different things. You don't know the difference between mics, you know. So you just oh, get yeah. a microphone and you think like, oh, this will work. <laughs> it's a piece of shit because you got yeah. it for 50 bucks on eBay. That's a part of the process, too. These are things you just got to learn over time. My first fucking video was like the shittiest microphone that has ever I existed. It was like it was like a ten dollar microphone that was already like fucking eight years old <laughs> in yeah. like 2006. I remember using that shit when I was a little kid. I would, you know, because I was just, you know, on a whim. I was like, yeah, I want to make a review. So I just rummaged around my parents basement looking for things <laughs> and I found mm -hmm. the microphone. I was like, yeah, I'll use this. It didn't matter to me at the time. And then. And then I got a blue Yeti, and then oh, that the was a bit Yeti. better. Yeah, and then that's I got, what I got as well. Sure, KSM32, and that was much better. Although my audio audio interface wasn't ideal, so it didn't sound perfect. And now I'm using the same microphone with a um, a Focusrite Scarlett audio USB interface, and it sounds awesome. It does. I agree with you there. But it's also important yeah. to say that, especially on YouTube, if you make good stuff and if your stuff is entertaining, people can look past shitty video quality or audio quality. If you're like an interesting, likable or funny person or you make mm -hmm. interesting, likable, funny content. But these are things that over time you should get better at, you know? Yeah, like uh, ex unless you're shoe on head. And yeah, shoe on head. You're doing well, that's it part of her. That's part of her reasons. aesthetic, right? Is that yeah. like. She's on her webcam. She's a normal girl on her webcam, and she's not going to fucking yeah. fancy it up for any reason. She stated many times that she just prefers that's how the the look and feel of it, which I can understand. Yeah, I totally understand that, and yeah. that like simplistic editing, like that's her style, and you can make that work, right? And th there's a difference between doing that on purpose because it works, and just not knowing what the fuck you're doing and being an idiot, you know? Mm. Uh, it's it, I it, that brings up another interesting point where like if on YouTube. I think it's important that you shouldn't be too polished because when you mm -hmm. do, it begins to feel corporate and like disconnected from the audience. Because part of the, it, the part of the appeal of YouTube is that, you know, it feels like a friend of yours is making a video, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of feeling where it's just like a normal guy just got some equipment and made a video. Well, what, what's an example of wow. something, a video or, or channel that's too polished? In too opinion. polished well yeah. like, like when you watch a fucking watch mojo video or like, yeah i was about know, to say some, the some, ones that are like yeah. actual companies you know yeah yeah like as much as like i that. as much as i love honest trailers you know screen junkies is kind of one of those channels yeah where it's, it's, like, it's, yes. like, it's a business it's not a person yeah. yeah and you start to lose it a bit and like pudding yeah. pie does phenomenally well right <laughs> can you say that can you pronounce his name again please Phen PewDiePie. Yes, I say his fucking PewDiePie. name. Right. PewDiePie. Is it PewDiePie? PewDiePie. Pew. I, I've been PewDiePie, calling him Pew. Not Pu PewDiePie. I've been calling him. I've been calling him PewDiePie since I was twelve, and it's just not going to change. It's not going to change. So <laughs> okay. we're gonna we're gonna drop Whatever. that. <laughs> I just I just wanted but to hear it again. <laughs> all like his his obviously his video equipment and whatever's gotten better, but essentially his whole channel throughout all of its existence has been him sitting in a chair talking, mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. love that because they love him, and no matter. It, if it becomes this polished bullshit, then people mm. aren't going to like that because they just kind of like they like watching him in a chair talk. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like Smosh. Like, like Smosh is a great example. Yeah. Smosh got much worse when they got more polished because people liked it. 
They're a company. Because it was too fucking... Yeah, now it's a company. It used to be two well, guys who made funny yeah. skits. And, like, uh, listen, I don't. I didn't even think their old skits were funny, but I get the appeal of them, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think it's oh, an interesting... Man. Oh, man. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, this They're... is... A... The, the best example of this for Smosh was when... Um... So, it's like Ian and Anthony, right? So, Anthony yeah. eventually left Smosh. I don't know if you're aware. That happened yeah, about a year ago. I think I'm partly responsible. I think Alex and I are partly responsible. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, because of the Smosh. Because we both made fucking videos just destroying them. Like, okay. you're pieces of shit. You're not yeah. funny. <laughs> Your content so, sucks. Basically, when... Um, when he left Smosh and he was just like, yeah, I want to be doing my own thing. And, you know, like it seemed like he had a, most of his disconnect because of how much of, of a brand it's become and how, yeah. and, and how it's not just, you know, him and his friend making videos anymore. And mm -hmm. he, he seemed to be very detached from that, whereas Ian, very gung ho. And the, the, the way that this is best illustrated is by watching both of their videos of the announcement of that he's leaving so anthony he makes it you know talk to the camera it's it's somewhat personal and he's explaining things thoroughly he just wants yeah. people to understand what's going yeah. on and why he's leaving and you know although although you could say that it's you know it's the typical kind of serious youtuber video but it still felt genuine then you go to uh ian's video it starts out with the the camera on his face. He's sitting down. He's like this, some very serious, like sad puppy dog eyes. And he talks about uh, Anthony leaving. But then he says, but you know what? It's not just me and Anthony. It's a whole team of people. The camera pans around and there's like an entire production staff there. <laughs> He's like, yeah. we have all these writers. And it literally, it turns into a fucking dumb skit. Where it loses mm -hmm. all sense of personability, <laughs> of if course. that's a word. Um, and and it's it's the entire rest of this video is this weird, complete lack of self awareness with with him essentially just saying like, oh yeah, Anthony wasn't that important anyway. We're still gonna be fine. And just it, it turns into this this show reel of look how many people we have working on this fucking dumb YouTube channel. They have like yeah. six writers. Isn't that embarrassing? With how it unfunny is. and shitty their videos are. <laughs> Well, that's they've, why they're so unfunny and shitty. People doing this. <laughs> that video to me was like this perfect, unintentional representation of just the differences between them and just how mm -hmm. much of a corporate, yeah. soulless funny. machine Smosh has become as a brand. Of course, Where it's just like that video is just evidence enough. And no, it, it's so strange that that Ian can post that and not realize. What he's, what he's doing, doing. or like mm -hmm. what he's unintentionally saying it's just so not self-aware at all it's well do you think they, they he considered that and then they told him not to do that the no smosh brand like five you, people who run no. <laughs> the smosh I mean, brand i mean i guess in theory company, it's him but like it. look at look at the content they make <laughs> it's yeah you know it's it's garbage i know they're probably but, rejoicing because they knew it would be big news so that's lots yeah, of use for them I mean, that's what's I guess important so. But anyway, uh, yeah, that was just to give an example, I guess. No, that is a it's a great example. It's a I mean, they do well still cuz they they're profiting off of one the fact that they used to make funny videos in theory and two that they they have a really good marketing team now, so they know how to appeal to that audience, right? Mm -hmm. Without making Pretty much. jokes that yeah. You know, like let's just throw in fart jokes. Kids like fart jokes. So um I've got a suggestion. Mhm. Mm so we're coming up to uh I've been recording for like an hour and a half. We've answered the first half of this video making process question in terms of how we started, um, but not necessarily what the process is. Do you want to save the actual process part for next week? Because yeah, we've still got sure. wild at yeah, heart, and we've yeah. still got real questions, and I just yeah. feel yeah. like that's probably yeah, we're at a hour and a half just already. Is that fine? And that'll give us more to talk about next week too. I have yeah. way more Simon Cade bashing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. So yeah, we talked about um, how we got to the point where we were competent enough to start YouTube, I guess, um, yeah. or where we started with in our, our background with editing or, or our interest, I guess. So we'll talk about the actual process two weeks from now, because otherwise this episode is going to be way too long. Yeah. I don't want to have to edit through all that shit. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. 
All right, so the uh, next segment of the podcast that we have is a uh, movie discussion segment. This is a spoiler discussion, so Spoilers. if you do not wish to be spoiled for the film that we are talking about, then either go watch the movie and come back, or there's some timestamps in the description so that you can skip this section if you wish to do so. And we will also be discussing another film, on the next episode, uh, so make sure you watch the at least the very end of this episode to know what that movie is so that you can be prepared in two weeks from now when we're talking about a different movie. So, Ralph, want to start this one off? Yeah, absolutely. So the film I recommended two weeks ago was Wild at Heart, a film by David Lynch, the infamous David Lynch. <laughs> He's a he's an amazing guy. He's a incredibly entertaining, funny guy in person, and he makes really interesting movies. Uh, I want to know first, your, your you guys, your experience with David Lynch films. How many you've seen? Mm. If you like him, if you've seen his quinoa video, have any of you seen his quinoa video? No. Was that the single shot thing? No, uh, I do no. know what you're talking about, Adam. But with, with there's the this fire. video, mm -hmm, which is pretty awesome. But I like he made that this one a video. Lot. Oh yeah, it was it was so cool. He used like an old film camera and like it had to be one shot. If you guys don't know what this is, you should look that up too. It's really awesome. But he also has this mm. video where it's just him cooking quinoa and it's like 25 minutes long and it's the most entertaining fucking thing. And all it is is black and white him cooking quinoa and then while it's cooking he tells a story about some bus he went on. It's the funniest shit. I fucking loved it. So I highly recommend that as well. But yeah, I want to know David Lynch. What do you guys think of him? Alex, have you seen a Lynch film? Um, I've oh, seen this one. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. <laughs> I've seen Wild I'm, at Heart. I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely the least experienced with him um, mm -hmm. compared you to you been guys. Properly lynched. I haven't been lynched yet, Aha. guys. Uh, so this, this, uh, this is my proper introduction, I'd say. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a true, true uh, noob when it comes to this guy. So you, you've picked the first proper. I must have seen something before, but it must have been so long ago, I can't remember. But so, yeah, this that's my, a, my, my experience, Adam. This is a good starter, David Lynch film. Aside from Blue Velvet, which is like everyone's seen because it's great. So I didn't want to be so obvious with that one. I believe that um, the first film I saw from him was Mulholland Drive, which mm -hmm. was recommended to me by the same drama teacher that I talked about. Um, oh, really? Yep. I think I, I think it was actually during the point in time where I was filming the documentary because I, I would follow her around sometimes and ask her questions or like interview her. And some of that was in mm -hmm. her office and she had like a poster or a DVD or something. I was like, oh, what's that? And she talked about it and I was like, oh, cool. And I checked it out. Um, I enjoyed it the first time I watched it. Was a little mm -hmm. bit confused, obviously. Um, of course. And um, that one I've probably, I've probably seen the most out of any of his films. And I probably would consider that to be my favorite. Um, mm -hmm. aside from that, um, there's a lot that I haven't seen that I really want to. He directed what? Lost Highway? Is that one of his films? Lost Highway is one. Yeah, I know that Inland one's supposed Empire. to be really good. Inland what Empire's are... really far out there, so that's Yeah, like that's one that I have seen. Last... Um, yeah. oh, so from 2006, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And that's got, um, yeah. Laura Dern and Jeremy Irons. And so 2006 was a point in time where, um... I would go on IMDb and I would find recent films that had Jeremy Irons in them because I think he has a very sexy voice. And so mm -hmm. I just really? wanted to watch more, <laughs> more movies where I could hear him speak. <laughs> really? And, um, okay, that's interesting. And so and it, it, it's in some ways it was a blessing and in some ways it was a curse. So mm -hmm. I got to see Inland Empire. But I also saw the wrong version of Lolita. <laughs> So uh, I watched the Jeremy Irons one and not the Kubrick one. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to the oh, Kubrick man. one. Oh, the but, Kubrick one's terrific, dude. Yeah, of course. Like, anyway, so yeah, Inland Empire. That was, I mean, that got that went into the realm of just kind of pretentious with like the bunnies and shit. But whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's. I'd like to see it again, but it's. Uh, that's, that's how I it feel. Didn't I kind of really do it for me. I kind of yeah. That's how I. I kind of backed out of it like 20 minutes in. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I can't, this is not something I can do right now. It's just way too pretentious for me right now at this moment anyway. And then obviously the movie you recommended. And then the, um, the only other one that I think I've seen from him, and this is a story that always pisses a lot of people off, 
was I I uh, rented the film Eraserhead, um, mm-hmm. and I rent I rented it on DVD. That and uh, it was like a one day rental or whatever, two day. I I don't remember, but I was basically, I had I had the rental. I was like in my bed about to um watch this movie and and you know eventually go to sleep it was just the you know end of the day kind of movie thing and i was looking forward to it and i was like hell yeah racerhead i've heard so many good things about this and um the movie was playing and about halfway through the movie i was like you know what i'm getting actually kind of tired um so out of respect for the film because i want to experience this in my in my most awakened state and not be watching it while falling asleep i'll stop mm-hmm. the film now i'll sleep i'll get up and then i'll finish the film but uh, I, uh, I wound up uh, inadvertently discovering that uh, David Lynch, for a period of, of time, was so adamantly against chapter selections that he would not allow his DVDs to be released with chapter selections in them. So then I, <laughs> I woke up and I, 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 w- I was like, okay, I want to continue where from where I left off. And I couldn't. And, there was no, and I couldn't skip to the next chapter. And my DVD player had like what, like four times speed max? And I was like, this is bullshit. And I just, yeah. I never, I never finished it. And I've only seen half of Eraserhead because David Lynch is just such an asshole <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that he completely refused to have chapter selections on his DVDs. And he, his justification for that was, he's like, oh no, you have to watch the movie all in one sitting. Otherwise you're not really watching it. And he has these really fucking pretentious rants on on just how wrong people are for watching movies <laughs> yeah. in, in ways that he doesn't want them to there's this uh-huh. clip on youtube where you can see him like you haven't watched a fucking movie if it's on your fucking phone you can't oh, yeah, watch a yeah, movie I've on your that. fucking phone i can't believe that people watching movies on their phones like he's he's a senile old pretentious crazy asshole and i i think that he's talented and that he has a lot to offer and obviously he has and obviously he has inspired a lot of people and a lot of works over time and you know he's a very important influential filmmaker but jesus fucking christ let people watch it the way they want to watch it because the only reason why i stopped halfway through was because i was trying to respect your fucking work and i didn't want to watch it falling asleep you asshole <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, so that's my we're just shitting on everybody Lynch today. <laughs> David yeah. Lynch, Simon Kane, <laughs> fucking Smosh. But this yeah, is Sardana um, cast. I that's true. I kind of agree with you, Adam. I think he's a bit of a loon. Yeah. Um, he also <laughs> he comes from that era where like film was the most important thing ever, and he's got like lots of big opinions, and he's he's a little full of himself. But yeah, I mean, so I never finished it. I would love to get the Criterion and watch it sometime. I just never yeah. got around to finishing it. And people get pissed off at me every time I tell that story because <laughs> they think that I'm, I'm not, at fault I, I for totally not finishing get it. it. But it's like it was a rental. I I wanted to take it back. I didn't have the fucking time or the energy or patience to fast forward four times speed like forty five minutes through a movie. I was just like, okay, well, thanks, Mister Lynch. You know, I guess I won't yeah. watch the rest of your movie. This is your fault because I looked mm-hmm. up online. I was like, oh, this is. He did this. (laughs) This was his idea. That's something I could totally see him saying, even though I've never seen him say that. Uh, It's, I I mean, I kind of agree with him in a way, like, um, his movies kind of put you in this trance, and you slowly just kind of need to absorb yourself in it, and if you you take yourself out halfway through and put yourself back in, it's not going to be the same. He's a... Yeah, but you uh, should have the ability to do that, you know? You should have the option. You should have the, but I, I can see. And what I mean, saying, obviously, like, he has to have changed his mind at this point because the Criterion releases, for for to the best of my knowledge, have chapter selections. <laughs> oh yeah, I think they just yeah. call them a loon and like, yeah, we're releasing it however we want. <laughs> and he is, but I, like you said, he's a he's a very interesting filmmaker, and no mm-hmm. one quite makes movies like him. Even though the stories yes. he tells, in many ways, are very you know simple, in terms of the the mm-hmm. base level. I mean, especially this movie. It's literally like a road trip movie across, you know, the country, and that's all it is. Mm-hmm. But the way he tells it, it's unlike anything you you've ever experienced. <laughs> so I guess we can get yeah. into the movie now. Yeah, let's so, let's do that. So as Go a first as a first time Lynch film, what did you think of a uh, Lost Lost Highway? I'm sorry, Wild at Heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other one. Wild. Yeah, lots of roads in his movies. Yeah, the, I'm interested why why you say this one's like a good Lynch starting movie. For any, have you got the, any particular it's reasons? It's one of them? the most normal ones. The most yeah. normal. Ones. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, you can fucking believe that. Mm-hmm. It's he's not even exaggerating. It's it is like this. Yeah. This one has like a, this one has a plot and a beginning, middle, and end that makes sense. Alex, I encourage you to watch <laughs> Inland Empire and give us your thoughts on that. Yeah, because oh, that shit. is one of the that that is nonsense. He shot that movie on like the shittiest possible camera that existed at the time, because <laughs> to, to, it's like an anti Hollywood movie. I get it, but it's like mm-hmm. he do, he doesn't care if anyone likes his movies or anything, and I kind of respect that. <laughs> yeah. He makes movies for himself, and that's it. Uh, you gotta respect the balls of that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, uh, it it clearly has its own vision. But personally, mm-hmm. I'm I'm kind of split right down the middle. For mm-hmm. everything I like about it, there's something I equally dislike about it. Sure. Um, it might change over time, but I thought overall it was kind of just a mixed bag for me. I thought the performances were good. I like the the idea of the story, um, but the problem is it, it just seemed kind of aimless to me Mm -hmm. um i was just i was just envisioning the whole time man i really would have liked to have seen this story under the hands of like i don't know the coen brothers or something um Mm -hmm. who would have focused it a bit more um yeah or yeah about uh, about an hour in i think it was it was really starting to lose me a bit um Mm -hmm. until willem dafoe came in and then um, (laughs) with his teeth that that gripped me a bit more um Uh Yeah, I, I don't know. There's just something about it that didn't really work for me. There, there wasn't anything that I found that creative in terms of mm-hmm. visual presentation. I thought in in that regard, it was it was kind of held on the backs of the performances more than anything, and, mm-hmm. and just kind of random weird things that started happening. Uh, he is. Uh, I, I mean, like it. that's. That's a part of the Lynch style is random weird things. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm sure this, <laughs> like is, this is something I, I'd be able to look yeah. back on after seeing more of his movies and comment on in, in a different yeah. light. But as like, I'm just I can only comment from my very first experience yeah. with um, mm-hmm. one of his films. I would say Mulholland yeah. Drive is probably one of the better starter Lynch films. I don't oh, know Blue if Velvet. you agree with me, it, Ralph. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Mulholland Drive. The the interesting thing about this movie too, even though I picked it, I don't think it's a great movie. I do think it's very interesting and a very good starter, David Lynch. But I do have some complaints with it as well, and I totally get where Alex is coming from. Because the first time I saw it, I'm like, "Yeah, I liked it," but like, what the fuck was was any of that? <laughs> I feel like the simplicity of of the plot almost is is a negative in terms of I wanted it to be either more weird or more normal. Um, I did. I feel like the balance wasn't. It didn't really work for me. Um, I I think the balance works because essentially. I think he's more concerned with the, the emotion of the storytelling rather than whether it lo- logistically makes any sense, right? And this is basically yeah. a movie about the two young star-crossed lovers go across the country and like, oh, we're we're going to, you know, we're going to be free and we're young and we're individuals and whatever. And they slowly grow up and realize the world is a much more fucked up place <laughs> than that. And yeah. the movie slowly gets much more darker and darker as it goes along. And that's kind of a theme within all of his movies. So once once you approach it from that angle, I think it, it begins to have a bit more focus and make a bit more sense and is not as random, mm-hmm. you know, but I, I get where you're coming from. And I, this is I definitely guess how I like I that aspect on paper more mm-hmm. than I do in execution because it's, I, I it think is, the execution it's such a simple story. It. And like, it's the kind of thing that should hit you in some way emotionally. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I really didn't feel anything particularly throughout the whole mm-hmm. film um sure. i was kind of just right in the middle the whole way like I, 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 there were some laughs admittedly i found some mm-hmm. things funny i laughed mm-hmm. at you know nicholas cage mostly in that fucking oh yeah he's snake Hell jacket yeah. which he which was owned. his idea yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. oh yeah he, it was his um, idea to have the snake jacket in the film despite the yeah. constant reincorporation <laughs> of that line yeah uh-huh. It's supposed to represent freedom. My yeah, it represents my individuality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. It's yeah, brilliant. Like, there's some great moments and great lines, like when he says he started smoking at the age of four, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when he, le- I think he, when he learns that Laura Dern is pregnant, and he lights two cigarettes in his mouth instead of one. It's oh just yeah, that's little, funny. little touches that, like that. That was brilliant too. And yeah, there's, um, there's some excellent stuff like that. And when Willem Dafoe shotguns his head off and it just explodes. Oh, that was yeah. great. And that the that dog was, walks out with someone's bit. arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some... And that's the thing, like <laughs> that kind of comedy didn't gel that well for for mm-hmm. any of the drama for me. Um, 
I, I, yeah. I would want more comedy or more drama um, mm -hmm. as opposed to not really... It's so a very strange style. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I think it might just be that more than anything. Like, as, as a first Lynch movie, it, it's quite strange, weird yeah. and different. I mm -hmm. think there are others that are more consistent in tone than this. Mm -hmm. But I I, I kind of love the inconsistency of the tone in this. I think I think the execution is what saves it. And I would yeah, yeah I would strongly uh, recommend Mulholland Drive for you, Alex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. also, I, yeah, it's, and I'm it's not even like a huge I guess. Lynch fan. Like yeah, I, I I don't suck his dick like a lot of people nah. do. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm not either. But like mm. the, the, the I'm just fuck. I forgot what I was gonna say. Anyway, Adam, I'll, I'll remember. You, um, say what you thought. I uh, I also well so I I enjoyed it overall. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I also have, you know, some mixed feelings about it. I, I'm glad to have experienced a Lynch film from this time period because, you know, I, I want to see more older Lynch material. He kind of, <laughs> he kind of operates in the sense where, you know how, what I, when I was talking about Hausu and I said, mm. um, that it operates in, in, in a way where it's almost above criticism in some senses where um a lot of things that you would normally point out as being like cheesy or unrealistic um actually add to the film in Hausu. um mm -hmm. yeah and i think that i think that lynch kind of operates in the same way but not as well as a film like Hausu, because there's still parts there's still there's still things about it where i'm like eh, that's kind of dumb like why opening scene the guy who's going to kill him literally tells him he's going to kill him and tells him who paid him to do it. And it's like that oh, kind of yeah. like that's that's a that just sets off the whole plot device. He didn't need to do mm -hmm. that. If you're paid of to kill not. somebody, you should just kill him sort of thing. But who knows? Like, perhaps it, it's it's almost impossible to de decipher whether or not it was an oversight or whether or not it was just something that was entirely intentional, I guess. Yeah. Again, um, it's his, just because it's he, Lynch. His movies you know, don't Lynch. have. Yeah, yeah, they don't have a logic. In comparing Lynch to Hausu, I'm not sure that it, it, in Lynch's case, that it makes the film better. Whereas in Hausu, it it adds to it. In Lynch's mm -hmm. film, it's just one of those like, hmm, should I criticize it sort of things that it doesn't really mm -hmm. add to it. It could have not been there and it would have been just as good or better. A, a large part of Lynch's style is parody and the parody mm -hmm. of elements in Hollywood movies. Mm -hmm. And okay. there's a lot of that in this where, like you said, yeah. dumb shit like that is like a total I mean this is why a movie like this doesn't win the Palme d'Or usually something that is <laughs> silly the Palme d'Or but there's a cuz he he's the making fun like again how he's making fun of the idea of like oh these two star-crossed lovers are going to go across the country and have a great time but they go mm -hmm. across they come across all this horrible shit he's making fun of movies like that where you're mm -hmm. like oh yeah the two dumb characters are going to go on this journey but they're going to find all this fucked up shit along the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I get that. I mean, Mulholland Drive is obviously a critique on Hollywood movies like that. And same thing with Blue Velvet and same thing with mm -hmm. Inland Empire. And not so much yeah. Eraserhead. But like, it's a it's a big theme and a lot of his stuff is parody mm -hmm. for the comedy's sake. Yeah, there's, um, there's certainly a lot that made this movie interesting and mm -hmm. um, unique. Again, just I guess uh, in the same vein as um, what I just mentioned, just a lot of weird kind of surreal or, or almost comedic things like, should I shoot him in the brain? <laughs> yeah. With I like a that. gun <laughs> so, <laughs> in so the many... forehead? And he says, mm -hmm. lots of brain damage. And that's really fun. Like, I mean, just these very strange characters yeah. that exist in the in, in this universe that i love i love the soundtrack mm -hmm. his use of music is always great my my favorite example of music is um like whenever the i think it was whenever the hitman was shown on screen there would be this kind of like very subtle quick low music hit like that boom like that mm -hmm. that i just that was so incredibly effective i really enjoyed that there's a lot of weird, uh, awkward moments, I guess, too, like the concert scene where the band finishes, like they play their song and literally nobody applauds or anything, and <laughs> and <it's, laughs> the room is just quiet enough that this dialogue conversation can take place, and and yeah, um, sure. and Nick Cage can start singing some Elvis, and the band mm -hmm. suddenly knows how to play that, even though they were playing I, a completely I, different genre. Oh, I love like, that. It, Again, that's like totally make it fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That that's it was clear by the end of that scene that it's like that's totally intentional. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was kind of 
funny and interesting. That's why it works for me, because he sets all that up in the beginning. Like, this is fantasy world. Nothing in this mm -hmm. world makes lo logically any sense. So you just got to um, go with it, because this is my... You're in my movie now. I do agree with Alex in the sense that it is... The first half of the movie is relatively slow. Like, it's a slow-paced sort of thing, mm -hmm. the first hour. And Willem Dafoe, as soon as he shows up and that conflict is introduced to the story, then it's much more engaging yeah. and not just from his performance but like the conflict itself also um yeah things start moving along because the f whole first hour of the movie it's kind of like it, it's it's a little repetitive in terms of the information and what's happening it's like oh sure. they love yeah, each other they're gonna fuck that. again and the hitman and the mom's evil and the wizard of oz and you know <laughs> like it's it's a lot of re repetition for the first half mm -hmm. the wizard of much. oz stuff is something i did not like that was way too over the top and heavy. Yeah, metal. that's that's um, an example of it going too far. I thought that was. I uh, was enjoying it for parts. I liked. Mm -hmm. I I would. But they did uh, it too much. It's one of those things where I wish it was a bit more subtle. Me too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying about the the balance of the the ridiculous parody. It would have been a bit more effective if it was more subtle. I think. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't think it works all the time, but. Once the, Willem Dafoe shows up, it gets that 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 clashing of tones gets really mm -hmm. good. Like the scene when Willem Dafoe comes in and like almost rapes Lord Dern. Oh, that's an amazing and, scene. And you're and you're like, oh my that's god, that's when the movie is, starts getting good again. Yeah, yeah. And then and way. then he's like saying like, fuck me, say that. And then she does, mm -hmm. and he goes, I love to, sweetheart, but I gotta get going. And he runs out, mm -hmm. and like all of us fucking laughed at that. He was like great. just that switching of tones is brilliant. And, like I love I love when he does stuff like that. Yeah, that that was the the biggest uh, shift in a character that I've seen from Willem Dafoe, and I've never mm -hmm. seen a lot of his older performances. I guess like this was probably the earliest um, Willem Dafoe performance I've seen, so yeah. maybe that's part partly to do with it. But like he he seems completely different than a lot of the other characters he plays. Oh yeah, very effective. The hilarious teeth that he has <laughs> yeah. the ridiculously evil teeth i mean he looks yeah. like satan he's literally dressed yeah like, and has the hair of satan mm -hmm. i guess to bring it back to the wizard of oz stuff uh, yes um we got off track there there were parts of it that you know if it were more subtle i would have enjoyed it a lot more there are aspects that i would have liked to have kept in the film like the uh curly shoes that was a nice subtle one I mean, it was in your face, but still subtle. Like as long as a lot of the other elements were there, weren't yeah, there? It was, it was acceptable just enough. Yeah. yeah. And then the hallucination of the witch on the road. It's like that could be taken as some sort of like I exaggerative, you know, interpretation in his own mind of how he doesn't like the character. Mm -hmm. But you don't necessarily have to relate it to the Wizard of Oz just yet. But mm -hmm. as soon as it gets to the point where they're at the like the they're around the the fire in the yard or whatever, the character literally says out loud. Everybody has to have some sort of a dog like Toto from the Wizard of Oz. And yeah. he says, yeah. he literally says, like Toto from the Wizard of Oz. And it's like, mm -hmm. why explain, why, why do you have to explain it like that? You know, like it just, it felt uh, almost borderline insulting. Yeah. In I completely sense. agree with it's, you. It felt very forced. Doesn't Lord Dern at the beginning say like, oh, my mom is like the Wicked Witch of the West or some shit like that. She had a line similar yeah. to that. And I'm like, yeah, th that's... It's really in your face. It's exactly. It's a it, to a point where it's like, all right, this is just stupid yeah. now. I, I think that if you cut out like half of the references to Wizard of Oz, it would have mm -hmm. been just subtle enough to not be in your face, but present enough so that most people watching it would figure it out and be like, oh, cool. You know, like I like that kind of uh, yeah. I would have preferred that association yeah. or connection. You know, like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what is that called? Um, a what is that word? I, I hear this know. all the fucking time. Illusion, I think. Sure. Illusion. That that works. <laughs> I think yeah. that's a word. That word is appropriate. To allude I mean, to something. I I did enjoy the film overall, and I would probably watch it again. Um, yeah. Wow. And if I made a best. What was that? 1990. If I um, made a best 1990 films list, it would yep. either be somewhere near the bottom or on a guilty pleasure or something. It'd be something mm -hmm. that I'd at least mention for sure on yeah. the list. It, yeah. It's it's uh it's a very there's a lot going on in this movie. <laughs> yeah, and that's where all yeah. of us are kind of like, huh. And when it's over, you're kind of like, huh. Well, I gotta I gotta kind of take that in for a bit. Let me. Yeah, like my reaction when it was over was okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah mine that mine was, was kind of like what yeah you're like what the what was i supposed to get out of that 
Yeah. But, and I, I realize I, all of these things you're saying, I'm like, yeah, I agree with that. I noticed that. But I don't know. It just, I just didn't have any reaction to any mm-hmm. of it. You know? I, I know I totally exactly what you mean. I didn't I totally feel get. anything. And it's like, yeah. well, maybe if this was slightly more condensed, then mm-hmm. the punch would be a bit more satisfying. But it's the fact you have to sit there for like two hours and five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. But I was entertained throughout. The thing mm-hmm. with Lynch too is he is he's great at working with actors and he's great at making characters, and that really helped me through it for a lot of it. Because mm-hmm. even if characters showed up for five minutes, they were entertaining for however long they were there for, you know, and then they were gone. Yeah, but I like. I was the, still always entertained by them. I like the part where um, the guy is in the hotel room and there's hyenas on the TV and and he just goes. Arr! For like yeah. no reason, yeah. And I'm wondering. I don't know if that was like a reference to the guy saying like everyone has a dog, or if mm-hmm. like if there was a purpose for that, or if it was just to be fucking. Hey, I'm David Lynch, and I put weird things in my movies. You know, it's a it's a total reference, probably. Prob- probably. I would have to. That's that was my first thought. I guess mm-hmm. but it was so strange, oh. but it was hilarious at the same time. One thing I do really like about the movie: some of the scene transitions were fantastic. Yes, the yeah. um, the lighter flame to the yellow robe paint, mm-hmm. the uh, yeah. dancing legs on the bed to the dancing legs at the concert. Mm-hmm. Those were very very well done, and I love when a film you can tell how planned out it is that they're able to do that. It's it's not just like oh yeah, show up on set like where do I put the camera? Like you know that there's a storyboard of of how the scene should transition, and I love that kind of intent in a film. Yeah, nothing felt incompetent in terms of how it was executed. Yeah. It was just like, why is he doing this? <laughs> More like some parts yeah, just felt like exactly kind it. of a mess. Yeah. Uh huh. It wasn't an, an incompetent mess, but it was kind of a mess. Yes. the The <laughs> biggest, I think, the biggest complaint I have is not the mother character because I think she's like wonderfully over the top, and she's actually Laura Dern's uh, mother in real life, I believe. Oh, oh, really? So, which yeah, which was very interesting to hear, but. It was just the fact that her subplot kind of went nowhere. It kind of just ended. I don't even well, remember how it like it just it ended. And I mean, was it. by the end of the film, like she was still. I mean, the information that we were presented with was mm-hmm. that she wanted to kill him because she thought that he had witnessed the arson of her husband, and that he didn't. She didn't want him the information getting out. Right. That that was what mm-hmm. was introduced yeah. as the motivation behind her character but by the end of the film when he had already like spent some time in jail and now he's back out and the you know like he, he was in jail for years it's back he's back out he's just uh, he, all he wants to do is just uh get back in this relationship and yet she's still trying to prevent that and she yeah. well she's she's like freaking out and like oh no it's the worst thing in the world but it's like that wasn't the motivation that she had before because like if she was still in the mindset of, of, oh, I don't want this information getting out, then that's not how she would be reacting. She'd be like, well, I guess he hasn't said anything for like five years. So, you know, like of what course. if she lost the plot? It's like the character motivations completely changed, you know? Yeah. It's like the and film it... forgot that that's why, or at least that was explained to us as why um, she was doing what she was doing. And instead it's just like, oh, I hate him in general. You know, that was weird. For every question like that that you have, I, I always just thought the answer was, yeah, I don't give a shit. Like that's what he was thinking. <laughs> like he doesn't care. Like it, this is his yeah. vision. He, and, he's and that's just doing that's whatever partly the fuck true. He wants. Uh, I empathize with that so much, Alex, when it comes uh-huh. to Lynch films. Of course, yes. because like I love Hodorowski, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. but when I watch his films, I I I can feel that every scene has some sort of at least emotional purpose and has a connection to. Yeah. something in his life where even if the metaphor isn't obvious or maybe it's too obvious, there's some. In, there's a, an insane amount of, of purpose and thought and care going into yeah. his films. When Hodorowski makes a movie, as cryptic as it may be, he's essentially like fucking cutting himself open and, and, and spewing his blood onto the, <laughs> the film reel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas with Lynch, a lot of the times, I think he kind of just throws shit in there and goes, eh, because it's different, you know? I, I don't feel like everything that Lynch puts in his films has a purpose to him even on an emotional sense i think that sometimes he just throws in to be really weird because he likes weird things sure i mean i, I, I guess where totally my my frustration comes from most of all 
the fact that I can see the potential for like a really gripping story in here somewhere. But the presentation of it and how just strange and bizarre and weird it is, almost for the sake of just being weird, mm -hmm. kind of just makes it annoying. <laughs> I um, I know we had the discussion last episode about pretentious directors and yeah. or what makes something Ooh. pretentious. And as much as like, again, I'll repeat myself, I think Lynch is incredibly talented and influential, one of the most important directors of all time. But he's incredibly pretentious at the same time. I do. I, Lynch would be up there for pretentiousness. Sure. If I were like to it's after that. this film ended, it didn't make me want to jump into another one of his movies. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. particularly. I, I I just have to be in the in the in the right mood to appreciate you know something like this. This you, you have to be on drugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. You know. <laughs> well, like I I Jenkum. it's like. It yeah, it's you listed as yeah, some you have to be on fucking Jankum. It's listed as a comedy comedy crime drama, <laughs> and, I, and, and I, I don't feel like it does really any of those things particularly well. Like it's funny yeah. at times. The there are obviously crime elements, but mm -hmm. it's not you know it's not that interesting just on that alone. And the, there are dramatic elements that are really interesting, but they're not really expanded upon in any meaningful way that emotes any response from me. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm just kind of left like well. I watched it, I guess. It's fine. But it's right down the film. middle. I don't think anything is like b bad about it as a thing. It's not like, yeah, I didn't like, I don't know, any technical aspects or anything like that. It's more just the fact that his vision doesn't align with what I want from a movie particularly. Especially mm -hmm. if one, when you read the description, young lovers, Sailor and Luna, run from a, the variety of weirdos that Lula's mum has hired to kill Sailor. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. like such a loose concept you can imagine so much, so many different interpretations of that, and I just think that any number of m my favorite directors could have done a, a much more entertaining job uh, interpreting that kind of story. Because I know this is based mm -hmm. on a novel, and I doubt the novel is told in this kind of way. I don't know; I haven't oh, read it, but I completely doubt it. Yeah, yeah. I think he's so, just fucking making fun of the novel. Again, I probably. like this movie because he makes fun of fucking movies like this <laughs> that are dumb. Yeah. But, and that's why I got so much enjoyment out of it. I mean, I mean, uh, logically, you could say like, uh, why, why didn't Lula have Sailor executed in in prison? Because that would have been much easier than going yeah. on this wild goose chase, yeah. right? There's but a lot yeah, of yeah, there's a lot of shit it, like that, but it just doesn't things, matter. There's some things where he's just like he doesn't really care because he can. Sure. He can. I got that impression early on. I, I never even. Of I, I totally. I get that too. I could totally see him. I could totally see him going like, "Eh, that doesn't matter. It's the emotion yeah. of the story that matters." And it's the thing. Sure, it's like well, David. When you can so clearly see what the director's intent was, and you can see exactly what they were going for, and mm -hmm. it's still not working for you, then it's just one mm -hmm. of those. Yeah. You know, agree to disagree kind of things. Where it's like I, yes. I can see what someone could get out of this, but me personally. Um, it's just, it just didn't do it for me particularly. Sure. Um, gotcha. Ralph. Yo. Do you know? Do you know why his nose was different at the end? Oh, because he got punched. Yeah, I thought that was because he was just yeah. attacked. Oh, it was like. Well, no, I mean, like he has, <laughs> he has. He's wearing like a pl a, like a plaster. <laughs> Again, nose, that's, that's not this David Lynch nose. going like, ah, it looks, it looks fine. We're making fun of I was, stupid. I tried movies to look like that this. up online, and I couldn't find anybody explaining why that happened. And yeah. the best guess that me and my roommate came up with is that perhaps during the fight choreography he got punched in the nose for real and they had to like put something over top or something like i don't oh it really so weird well i don't know like that was our I best thought that was guess. just to accentuate that he was you know attacked and punched yeah i thought that no, was just I mean, like a it was it was like, like a a, an entirely new yeah, look, go back and look at the end it was like a new layer of nose yeah, where yeah. it wasn't it, was it didn't swollen. look like nick cage's nose but broken it didn't. It didn't look like like. Oh yeah, that's the character's <laughs> broken nose. It looked like he was wearing a fucking fake nose, like Maybe. a new nose. It wasn't even the same shape. It was. A, it wasn't even the same color. It was like much lighter than the rest of his skin, and it was so weird. Maybe look it represents at the end how scene is on up. YouTube, where you, you can you can you can look at it. The uh, end credits yeah. song is posted on YouTube. Go to that and look at his fucking nose. And tell me what the hell that's supposed to be, because I'm really fucking confused here. <laughs> like, I mean, if, if if it was supposed to imply that that was from the fight in the story, shouldn't it be bleeding or something? I don't know. It was never that never happened. No, he yes, just has a different never, nose, and I don't. They get never it. expected you to question it that far. 
Like a lot of things in this movie, like yeah, I just it, didn't it even looks... bother questioning. It's just like it's... I just take it as it comes. Just, I just Lynch decided it's weird, so it's in the movie. Yeah, that, Dude, that's, that's that's the kind of philosophy got, I follow. Got punched. Maybe it represents how he woke ah! up a new man. Hmm. He got woke. He literally yeah. looks different. He got yeah, exactly. So he has a new nose now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that that scene is excellent too, where he gets knocked out by is a that bunch a of random bugs. Reference, I don't know. Well, the fairy was who came down, of course, of course. and it's like you oh, need man. to find your true love. And he wakes up, he's like, "Thank you, gentlemen, for getting into this fight with me, because I now know I gotta find my true love." And that was one off. of my favorite uh, moments of the film. Was right before he got knocked out, and he says, "The hell you faggots want for like <laughs> oh, yeah. no reason?" <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> he's sailored. Dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you guys Cage think I'm I'm being perfect. fair to the movie? I think yes, you're being totally fair. I don't think. Yeah. I mm-hmm. I I uh my rating for this film, I would give it like a 7. It mm-hmm. was it would not be an 8. Uh it might be a 6. I might I don't know. But um like I said, yeah. like I would if I include it on my list, it would be near the bottom or my guilty pleasures for 1990. Mm-hmm. Like it's something that I um very much appreciate and I see, you know, there there's a lot of value in it. But at the same time, yeah. I agree with you. The first half was very slow. I'm not like eager to watch it again exactly, um, yeah. right away. And I can totally understand, even though you can appreciate elements in it, that you know it's not something that you get that much enjoyment out of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be that one guy that's like... Oh. Uh, I didn't like... No you way. didn't get it, didn't. man! Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, get, yeah. <laughs> I get it. You didn't get it, you stupid <laughs> asshole. Yeah, I, I understand I, everything you guys are saying. I just... I fucking love this guy, so I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I picture this. I picture this kook going like, "Ah, it doesn't matter. It's about the emotion." I wanna, I wanna get your opinion on this, Ralph. Um, would you say that there is a, a significant amount of people that uh, only like David Lynch films because they think it makes them look smart? Shh. <laughs> Well, I'm I go to film school where there's like that's half the fucking population. Right? <laughs> so yes. Yeah. <laughs> um I think a lot of them see it, right? They and they think it means something. And they're willing to put up with a bunch of bullshit because they mm-hmm. go like, Oh, Lynch put it in there for a reason. And I'm yeah, not of that opinion. I, I think yeah, you know, it's a trust. It's, faith, it's like mm-hmm. But it's not you know, you would never know. You're just you have faith in exactly. the director that there must be some sort of reason for this being that and that's that it's above my head and earn. that i'm not smarter than the movie the movie's smarter than me yeah that's that's it when really david lynch is a fucking old kook <laughs> who yeah. does random shit sometimes see sometimes and I, love him I, ima- I imagine how people would respond to some of these movies if you took out the the name and you didn't know who directed it you didn't mm. know who was involved and you just well, got the, that reaction. The, the name is like half be of it because it, yeah. they, they trust Lynch as an artist that he yeah. does have reasons for it. And I don't think he always does. I think certainly some of it is, right? But that's something you have to earn. You can't just fucking like... If the, yeah. if David Lynch's first movie was Inland Empire, everyone would hate him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but now that he's David Lynch, he can make a movie like that and everyone would go, okay, he has reasons for doing it. And I've gotten that complaint before watching a Lynch movie. And they're like, Ralph, you just didn't get it, man. And I'm like, no, he's a he's a crazy kook, and sometimes he <laughs> makes good movies. <laughs> and I, he's but an I love him. Uh huh. That's why he has a 25 minute video of him cooking quinoa. <laughs> <laughs> I like right? his hair. I'll give him that. Oh yeah, I love him <laughs> as a person. Great hair. He's fascinating to listen to. If you're gonna listen to a filmmaker, listen to David Lynch. You know, he's a he's a really mm. interesting guy. Not Simon Cade, who who pretends to <laughs> teach you. Who pretends to teach you how to make movies? I mean, well, he's never made a movie in his life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking about um, the name that Lynch had made for himself when I was considering that this one, the Palm Palm d'Or, mm-hmm. um, because I wholeheartedly <laughs> believe that, like, if the exact same film was submitted to Cannes and it wasn't David Lynch, oh, then it probably would not have gotten the same response from Cannes. Because at that point, David Lynch had definitely made a name for himself. And there's this kind of expectation of what um, what is... Y- people have an idea of what to expect from the director in the same way that people have an idea w- of what to expect from Quentin Tarantino at this point, sure. you know? And yeah, um, yeah I, th- I think that, you know, especially in a setting where you're watching films in a theater being screened and everybody's seeing it for the first time and there is no level of expectation from other 
reviewers or anything and it's it's all fresh then watching the film i think that you know they're in that environment especially there would probably be a lot of just oh faith in the director this is david lynch there's something that's over my head sort of thing you yeah know? yeah i think that's not a to lot say that it. it's a bad pick i don't know what else was at Cannes that year um sure perhaps even if it wasn't david lynch it would have won the palm d'or because there wasn't anything else that was better who knows Definitely not. Have either of you guys seen <laughs> The Elephant Man? I have not. not. Yet. Yeah. Neither not of you yet. have. No. no. That's that, I, that to me looks like one that would resonate with me a bit more than something like this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I, yeah, think I haven't may- seen that yeah, one maybe yet. Maybe it would. I'm guessing there's some weird ass shit in there too. Probably. I mean, when I, when I, mean, I say this is a good first David Lynch, I mean this is a perfect mix of his like kooky old man antics yeah. and like a, a story mm-hmm. that makes sense <laughs> like <laughs> this is the best this is the best david lynch movie to watch for yeah. the first time Mulholland drive gonna recommend and, it again Alex. okay but Mulholland drive Let's like see. it's deceptive in how normal it is for most of it and then the last 20 minutes just goes bonkers you know mm-hmm. so uh, it's it seems to have a bit more of a, an artistic purpose though. sure yeah I think it's it's definitely a much better movie. Compared to a lot of other Lynch films, especially? Yeah. I mean, it's certainly an interesting movie. We've been talking about it for a while. What about Dune? Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. (laughs) I saw Hodorowsky is doing the documentary. Oh, Dune is not good. Dune is just not good. I shot what I heard. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, fucking Villeneuve and Deacons are doing Dune now. Yeah. How hyped are you? I'm hyped. Fuck. Yeah, same. I don't even give a shit about the, the Dune universe. I'm just excited for more Villeneuve and Deacons. Yeah, and it's a big enough property that I know a lot of money is going to be thrown at it, which is just gets me very excited. Gets me hard. Mm. Are, are we done with uh, Lynch? I think yeah, so. Ralph, what would you rate it out of 10? Uh, I do star ratings now because I'm on Letterboxd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like three, four star. Like three. Three is good. Okay. Yeah. It's a good movie. You don't do half stars? Nah. Let's keep it simple. Three stars. Okay. We'll do three. So your rating is lower than mine then. See, I'd give it a three as well, which is interesting because like I really? sound way more negative than you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I gave it a seven. So I, I do like I, this movie a lot. I'm a yeah. half point above Ralph, even though he enjoys it a lot more <laughs> than me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. Well, if it was like out of ten, I'd probably be on the same level, like seven. But yeah, okay. Well, you, well, you can yeah. do half stars if you want. I'm just saying. No, dude. Nothing stopping you from doing <laughs> half stars. No! <laughs> I think Roger Ebert did half stars. You don't want to be like Roger Ebert? Uh, Roger Ebert. Are you out of four dead. stars or are you out of five Roger stars? Because it's supposed to be out of four stars, isn't it? Yeah, You're doing sure. five stars? You're on Letterboxd. You're doing That's five right. stars. I right. give it a thumbs up. Actually, David, like, uh, Roger Ebert hated <laughs> David Lynch in all of his movies. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> he thought he was a pretentious. Yeah, I think I actually read uh, on the mm-hmm. Wikipedia page one of uh, the negative reviews that was listed. There was from Roger Ebert. Oh yeah, he does not yeah. like, and he thinks Lynch is like a sexist or something. Like he, mm-hmm. he doesn't fucking treat women well in his movies. He's always using them mm-hmm. as objects. I don't agree with that, but oh. I mean, yeah, we'll have to hey, ask Laura Dern. We'll have to ask uh, Roger Ebert himself. <laughs> we can rebuild him. Mm-hmm. We have the technology. I do love him. I don't want to knock Roger Ebert. Oh man! All right. I'm just Suck. I'm looking at RogerEbert.com right now. What a shit site this is now. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You they, know what I really gave... fucking hate? What is when when we see now in current current year we see reviews for a movie on the poster on the DVD whatever saying this movie was excellent and then the quote RogerEbert.com but it's like yeah. there's an individual on mm-hmm. that website who wrote the review but yeah. you're not including the individual's name. Because it makes it look like Roger Ebert somehow supports this, and I guess you're trying to trick people that don't know he's dead. I guess. Yeah. Like, what yeah. is this? That's it's bullshit. Like, is... Of course. So stupid. It is. You don't. It's speak like some random fucking guy. Roger Tomb Raider's Ebert. got three stars. He's not a person anymore. He's a fucking brand. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! What a shame. So that's that. Yeah, Ralph, uh, lead us away into the uh, so territory the of the uh, questions. Sure. Of which we should Alex. probably only answer a couple. Yeah. We yeah. Yeah. We've been. Let's do like two. Alex, do yeah. you have any? Yeah. Yeah, I have some. All right. So how about you ask one, and then I'll ask one. Okay. This is a simple one. All right. From Dexter Lecter ninety nine, who says, mm-hmm. "Would you date someone who has awful taste in movies?" Hmm. 
Yeah, of course. <laughs> Nah, most most females I've ever met in my life, fucking, they have awful taste in movies. <laughs> really? Well, they do. Well, I date dudes, so they have no excuse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> these these simple women. Don't Whoa. Have, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> but uh, but the, the thing is, when you date some, film is a language, and you got to teach it, right? So mm -hmm. you, you watch their movies with them, and you see what's likable about them. You're like, okay, this is this is not good, but let let me show her... You know, some of the movies I like, the more grounded, good movies. I'm trying to think of one. Like The Revenant. The Revenant's a good, like, it's a great movie, and any normie could watch it and go like, oh, that's an interesting yeah. film. That was an, it was a well-shot movie. And then from there, you introduce them to more weird shit, you know? You, yeah. can, you can teach good taste in film. <laughs> that's what I'm trying you to say. You can teach good taste. Um, but even if he can't, like, who cares? Yeah. Adam? Mm-hmm. Uh, what about you, Alex? Um, I think I could. It just would be sort of a waste, you know. If if you're so passionate about something, and you spend a lot of time, um, in revolving your life around this thing, it just yeah. seems like a waste to not have some level to share this this passion on. But I don't think it would be the be all end all necessarily, as long as you have not. other things in common. Like more more things exist in life than movies. So. Of course. Like, every girl I've dated, they usually don't even like movies that much. They watch them, you know? And yeah. It's just not passionate about them. Not passionate. Mostly not... just on their phones. And, and it's, not it's good, too, because yeah. you instead Can't talk watch a movie about on other your things. fucking phone! <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wouldn't... <laughs> but, like, then you talk about other things, things that you're not as well-versed in, and it's actually it actually becomes a more interesting conversation, yeah. you know? Because if it's... If it's like, oh, two film, I've dated, like, I've gone on dates with film girls, and they're fucking boring, because we just both say the same shit, <laughs> or they go like, ah, I didn't like this thing, and I'm like, oh, well, I like that thing, yeah. and then it ends up being a fucking argument instead of a date. <laughs> 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 so, I, all the best experiences I've had with girls have been girls who aren't well-versed in movies, and we just end up talking about other things, or ourselves, you know? Right. I don't think it affects a relationship at all. If someone is, um not as passionate about film as me that's totally fine if somebody just hasn't seen that many movies or hasn't seen you know they've only been exposed to what studios heavily push or advertise like nothing wrong with that if you've never dipped your toe into the world of like art film or you know older cinema or you know indie foreign language whatever that's fine if you've never really gotten to that point i guess or never even had the interest to it would be a major turnoff however if let's say like they watched big bang theory every day because I mean, <laughs> yeah. that would just that would just be like that would be a day i i would just not want to spend time <laughs> around them, yeah <laughs> you know but i guess you know it would also there, there's other factors that would have to be included like how much i relate to them on other things if they're like a perfect mm -hmm. match in everything except film you know, then I might have to reconsider. But I, I mean, the the biggest problem that that lies within that is that I don't censor my opinions out of just you know <laughs> wanting to be <laughs> polite. And no if way. I'm going to share my life <laughs> with somebody, then I would hope and expect that I would be able to to have conversations with them where I can disagree with them about certain things or agree to disagree you know i wouldn't want to be in a relationship if i were hiding my opinions even if it were just on films uh out of fear of upsetting them so it would also have to do with how they take it if i were to say like i hate this because xyz and if they if that didn't go well for them then i don't think i don't think i could be in a relationship with them because yeah you know, part of a relationship would be trust and honesty, and I wouldn't want to be tiptoeing over what I should say and shouldn't say <laughs> around them. Otherwise, I I just wouldn't want to date them. So, it's a complicated answer, but yeah. uh, it's a complicated but, question. Yeah. Don't you think it then it'd be better if you didn't date someone with like strong movie tastes? Because I'd be pissed about a movie, and then she would have no stake in the fight because she doesn't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So she just gets, well, so she usually just laughs at me being angry at something. <laughs> If someone's that's that's if usually really one. passionate about something like movies, that's not a that's not a negative aspect. Even if there's movies yeah. that they're passionate about that I'm not even into, 
you know like as long as yeah. as long okay. as i can understand why they like it mm-hmm. then there's you know there's no real issue as long as we're not like fighting with each other over it you know yeah. i don't see, i don't take issue <laughs> when people enjoy things that that i don't even though a lot of people seem to think that i have that mentality yeah, sometimes i'll be everything. a bit harsher in my reviews if i get the impression that more people like the film then i'll mm-hmm. be trying to be more persuasive or angrier in my reviews but i don't i don't get upset if somebody enjoys something that i don't like good for you that you're enjoying something you know yeah. but sure listen if she gives good head then i don't give a fuck mm. if she watches <laughs> it. well if you date dudes then most dudes are much better than women at head anyway or that's, that's <laughs> well the, they, uh, they understand, how it, understand yeah, how it works yeah they understand how it works i believe it. is that true i would well i haven't gotten head from a girl so <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> we'll never know. It could just be a stereotype, but I yeah. I have a feeling like like it's probably true. People with dicks understand dicks better, I think. Yeah, I, I would think, think so. so. That sound logic to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Move Next on. question. <laughs> All right. Here's mine. What are some favorite <laughs> bands? Oh wait, that's not it. <laughs> oh no. Uh, <laughs> I was about to read that. Uh, <laughs> read one of the shit ones. Yeah. Uh, did you? You didn't mean to do that. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. Yeah. How do you guys come up with such garbage yet funny movies? Like, what is your process behind finding movies worth reviewing? So I guess what he's asking is like, how do we pick the movies we review? You know, hmm. which kind of ties into our process. When you tend to, I focus more on like the the the. Mm, most garbage of garbage you can find <laughs> yeah um mm. so you wind up in that section of imdb where it's just you just keep being recommended film after film it's like i didn't know that existed i didn't know that existed <laughs> yeah. holy fuck i definitely didn't know that existed and you just keep going and going and <laughs> algorithms of course, yeah exactly um places like twitter and reddit you're constantly being suggested um yeah. and emails and stuff certain films so if anything of note comes up i'll, I'll find them through through that way um people are constantly suggesting films and i'll quickly give them a little search to see if the if they have any potential and i'll either chuck them on the list or not bother it's as simple as that really Mm -hmm. Hmm, that makes sense well at this point for sure a lot of um recommendations are sent my way um other otherwise i mean you know the internet is just a very valuable resource if you spend a lot of time searching up movies and you're passionate about it then you're bound to find some la hidden gems. <laughs> you know, you're bound you're bound to find some some things that not everybody's on top of yet. Yeah, I mean like there's certain films that uh you know, not every YouTuber has covered that are still available mm-hmm. and I guess it's just a matter of digging enough to find them, you know. When I every time I see an IMDb page, I don't just look at the page itself i'm i'm opening up new tabs for like what else has this director done what else has this actor mm-hmm. done and i i'm interested and curious enough for my own you know my own benefit that uh, i wind up finding some cool and interesting things fateful findings when i found that which is pretty <laughs> you know early on before a lot of people had covered neil breen initially somebody sent me a tweet and then I checked out the trailer, but you know, people send me tweets all the time for shit that they want me to check out. But it was yeah. the trailer that I watched where I was like, "There's something here. <laughs> There's something here, really? and I want to see yeah. it." Uh, going back even further than that, um, Birdemic, which was something I reviewed in 2011, I literally discovered that movie by um, just walking through uh, HMV, a uh, physical media store that no longer exists in Canada. I'm, I'm pretty sure they've closed down many. Really, we have them um, here still. No, yeah, yeah, I know. It's a British company, but I think they've oh, uh, right. t- they've bailed from Canada cuz there's not <laughs> that many people here anyway, but yeah, I was going through the Blu-ray section just checking shit out and uh came across the Blu-ray cover for Birdemic and I was like this looks amazing, so I got it. <laughs> and that's literally how I found the movie. Like there was no there was no other like huge buzz about it, you know, like it was relatively minimal for the time being and so I was one of the one of the earlier reviews for that one and then cool cat i found just by finding a trailer on the everything is terrible website you know sometimes mm. i think that um a lot of people uh that are starting out in this sort of like film review community or essay or comedic videos or whatever commentary kind of channels i think a lot of people get trapped in the mindset that the only things worth covering are things that are already popular because you get derivative 
kind of attention from it based on mm -hmm. uh, YouTube algorithms. You know, the more attention sure. something already has, the more yeah. it'll give you. But sometimes you just got to go for it. Like if you see something that's like, that looks interesting and no one's seen it before, sometimes you just got to fucking go for it. And you yeah. like, who knows? You might be the first. You might be the person to discover it. And you that might get you a lot of attention that way. Like my Cool Cat review is my most viewed video. Uh -huh. You know? Like and that's it's something nothing. that I essentially discovered and it was just so fucking hilarious that, that <laughs> it wound up helping out my channel a lot also the drama exactly. helped out a lot <laughs> oh yeah, yeah that too for the period of time where my review was the only one that was accessible because <laughs> every other oh, yeah. one was copyright claim <laughs> but um yeah you just if you see something that looks even moderately interesting the only way to find out whether or not it's it's a gem is to go for it like ralph did somebody recommend love on a leash to you like somebody sent that to yeah you? Where a friend did that a from? friend of mine was like, do you want to watch this movie where a woman fucks a dog? And I'm like, <laughs> all right. And then we watched it. And yeah, yeah, it turned out to be a great thing. And that's... Because that's one I literally never heard of before you covered it. That's how I discovered it. So it's, it's as simple as that. Like the Mystery Diners thing was just... we I watched a show with my dad and it was Mystery Diners and it was hilarious. And I made a video of it. And then mm. it got, you know, how many views? Like 2 million views now or some shit? That's my most popular video. And it's of this stupid nice. show that no one watches. Yeah. So... You're totally right about yeah, that. Yeah, I think I um, we're clearly people who are, are you know, we, we are passionate about the media that we consume. And so, like, even if we weren't doing YouTube, we'd be watching a lot of movies, you know, like, yeah. we'd mm -hmm. be just as interested, even if it wasn't our jobs. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that are not necessarily passionate about it, but they want to have a successful, like, they want to be, like, a funny film review channel, like, they want the benefits from it they want the yeah. like stardom the respect yep. etc but and and so you know of course a lot of people are going if if they go into it with that mindset and they're not already passionate about something and they're not following their passions then they're going to come into a lot of uh roadblocks and challenges when it comes to something like that just discovering new content to cover you know there's yeah. so many people that ask like how do i make a good review and it's like well you got to find something that you have to say, <laughs> you know, yeah, you got to yeah, find gotta, something that you have an opinion passionate. on. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't force it. And if you are forcing it, then maybe you should be doing something different, not trying to be mean, but like mm -hmm. find what you are passionate about. Don't try to force yourself into something that you're not passionate about. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you're passionate say. about movies, it should just spill out of you. Because even when I was 12 years old, making those shitty ass videos, and I had no fucking idea what I was talking about. I still managed mm -hmm. to talk for 10 minutes, even if it was just a bunch of shit. You know, <laughs> so it, I yeah, you just got to find something you're passionate about and talk about that. Mm -hmm. But I think my process is a bit different from you guys because I also go after the, the big Hollywood movies that I hate yeah. and like more actively because I fucking hate that system. I'm glad you do because a lot of those I consider to be like not worth my time. And so I'm glad that you're doing it so that I yeah. don't have to. I hate that uninspired drivel. So like movies like The Mummy. I go, oh yeah, I thought that movie was hilarious. Oh yeah, it's terrible. I watched that in theaters. You saw that in theaters? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. While I was but, at VidCon. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but like a movie like that, this is something I've started doing recently is where I go, because I get bored making reviews sometimes, I go, all right, I'm going to mm. review this movie, but I'm, I haven't seen the movie yet. So I'm going to I'm gonna give it this horrible negative review and I gonna, I'm going to have to approach it at some angle where it's interesting mm -hmm. and it challenges myself to come up with something interesting to say because if you actually mm -hmm. saw the mummy you know it's a fucking it's just boring and it's mostly just exposition so i'm like what am i going to say about mm -hmm. this and i mainly tackled it from the you know the the production disaster that it was rather than the actual film even though the actual mm -hmm. film I, I do comment on it a decent amount but i started doing that recently where i yeah. would just pick a movie that i haven't seen and then make a whole video around it even though i haven't seen it yet it's good to challenge yourself yeah it is because i also want to make all my videos unique and different from each other in some mm -hmm. ways so it's not just kind of watching the same thing over and over and i think when you do that you you know you you find different angles to approach the same shitty ass movies because all these movies eventually when you review this many of them these formulaic hollywood movies they're all the same so you got to mm -hmm. find different ways of saying the same thing Anyway, that's my process yeah. of doing it. It's good to it's good to find new ways to do things and change what you're doing and experiment and challenge yourself. 
Yeah, he I, uh, that I haven't seen King. your mummy video yet, but um, I thought the movie was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> the the opening scene, I, 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 as I was watching that in theaters with uh, Tom Cruise and his buddy, and they're going around like Iraq or wherever. Yeah, it was like the most juvenile <laughs> representation of of Middle Eastern conflict I've ever seen. It mm-hmm. they might as well have had fucking Nerf guns. And of I could have I was I was seriously genuinely convinced at that point as it was continuing even after that fight scene ended and they were like running around going like boo boo pew pew like dodging bullets just running around they don't give a shit. I was convinced that they would pull the whole Oh, he's on a film set, and this is just a part of a cheesy movie. Oh, really? Reveal, they're going to reveal that they were filming some some cheesy movie. Even when the female lead showed up, I'm like, oh yeah, she's just a total. She's a character from the cheesy movie they're filming, and Tom Cruise's character. They're all actors, and then they're going to go to the real story, and it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> was it was like, that, that was actually the movie. It never happened, dude. Especially when there's the explosion, and there's like 20 shots of it. It's like the same, like different angles of the same explosion. Which is shit that happens all the time in these movies. I love the infinite supply of mercury below them. Oh yeah, that too. It's interesting how we approach these movies because you go after shit like that, which is like so specific, like it's just these little things that annoy you. And I like mm. me, I don't give a fuck about any of that stuff. I'll go. I could forgive stuff like that as long as the characters are good. <laughs> so, and then Alex is just when he sees shit like this, he's just annoyed, <laughs> and he just he expresses his annoyance <laughs> in every single one of his videos. It's great. So. I guess what I'm trying to say is like our process is different and I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we'll talk more about our processes in the next episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Are we, what, did to we all answer continued. this question thoroughly? I think so. Alex, did you? Uh, eh. Yeah. 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 It, okay. The only other one I'd add is um, if I'm, if I really passionately hate something like, you know, that movie sing. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I, when I saw the trailers for that, I was like, I'm going to really dislike this movie based on these trailers. And then I watched I like it and I was like, I really yeah. passionately, passionately yeah. fucking <laughs> hate this film. So I'm making a video on it. So I did that. Yeah. You guys, yeah. you guys choose uh, good content to cover because it's very, it's like very popular content, especially in that brings in a lot of extra people that yeah. they would just discover you for the first time. And they're like, hell yeah, I've been waiting for someone to talk about how shit this yeah. movie is. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, it's great. Sometimes you just got to be that voice. Mm hmm. I usually do it like seven months after a movie's out, so it's, <laughs> I, I get like time to digest it and like really yeah. take in the cultural impact it's had. Like that mummy thing, I talk about the whole dark universe and how it's fallen apart since it came out. And like, oh, it's hilarious! <laughs> yeah, or the Ghostbusters. How they were trying thing. to set up yeah. the the, the, <laughs> yeah, the dark, I love that. connected I universe love with the fail. mummy. Yeah, but you, see, <laughs> like you can't you can't chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> you can't chronicle that shit if you just release if you release a review the day the movie comes out. Yeah. But like mm. seven months after, you can fucking talk about how the writers oh, left and how the producers left and oh man. But yeah. I should make a video on the mummy now that I got sure? somebody helping out with some some of my editing. Sure, why not? Should do hmm. that. So we should uh I guess I guess we're done with that uh question and we'll uh move on to the uh the closing of the podcast, if we're oh, all yeah. comfortable with that. Sure. Yeah, um, boy. And, uh, it's your turn to review or write yes. a movie. It is. Yeah. The, uh, the wheel has spun around, and now <laughs> we are back to myself, where I now have the power of suggesting a film <laughs> for everyone to watch and talk about on the next podcast. And like I said, it will be a spoiler discussion, so if you don't want to have to skip the part of the next podcast where we talk about it, and be spoiled and just watch the fucking movie. I mentioned this in one of the previous episodes and you both said you hadn't seen it. And so I'm hoping that's still the case. I kind of doubt that you guys have seen it between uh, then and now. Uh, Dancer in the Dark by Lars von Trier uh, ah. is my recommendation. No, and not seen um, that one. I will encourage you not to look up anything about it because there's if you don't know anything about it, there are aspects to the film that I feel would be much more effective if you don't know that it's coming, sort of thing. In well, the so same sense that the Den- Denis Villeneuve, um, you know, he didn't want Harrison Ford to be known, sort of thing. Yeah. You know, okay. like experiencing that in the film, having it surprise you, I feel would be much more effective. So I would say just find a copy of the movie. I don't think it has a Criterion release yet. I think the only Blu-ray that exists is... Um, 
a Japanese one, but Ralph, that is Region A, and it's probably on iTunes somewhere. But yeah, however you guys can find it, Dancer in the Dark by Lars von Trier. We also have a uh, special guest, our first guest appearing next episode, uh, mm. Branthony Framdango, uh, the internet's the uh, busiest the music himself. nerd. Yes, Anthony Fantano, and I told him about uh, which film to watch as well, so he'll be joining in on the film discussion with us. And mm. um, yeah, that's uh, that's my recommendation. It's a it's don't want to say anything about it other than it will surely provide for some interesting discussion. <laughs> I <think>. especially <laughs> with Fantano in the in the uh, conversation as oh, well. Yeah. I think that's a good pick for all of us. And um, yeah, the, uh, the, I guess that concludes this uh, episode of uh, Sardonicast, episode four. Awesome. Um, we did it. Yeah. Uh, if uh, you want to support us, we all have uh, our own individual YouTube channels. Obviously, they're linked in the description. There will be other things linked in the description that we talked about uh, during this episode, like that uh, fucking documentary thing that I made when I was in high school and <laughs> some other shit. We'll the DSLR guide. What- yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll link some shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll link the one, the writing video he has, because that video, you have to see that shit. Okay. That shit's hilarious. Well, yeah, don't don't harass the guy or anything. I don't want to... No, no, <laughs> no, don't. Don't. I, guess. don't. <laughs> I just have to throw that out. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, yeah, don't destroy the kid. Just... Yeah, so, well, yeah, we'll share some links. Uh, otherwise, uh, we also have uh, our own individual Patreon uh, accounts. Some of us do. Those are linked in the description. And uh, yeah, thank thank you for uh, watching this episode or listening to at least. Uh, yeah. Any final closing words from uh, either of you uh, assholes? <laughs> All uh, right, well, fuck you too. Those yeah. are my Whoa, final words. <laughs> Did I lie? No. Nah. Was I wrong? Nope. No. You're, you're totally okay. correct. Yeah, you're right. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.